YouTube, how are you doing? And welcome to the complete ghost guide updated for 2023. Uh, the last ghost guide I've done is already a year old. And you guys have been asking me for the longest time to do an updated ghost guide because a lot of stuff has changed in this game. This game is so deep. By the length of the video, you can see just how much there is to know about the ghosts in this game. Every single ghost has many hidden abilities, many strengths, many weaknesses. Uh, some ghosts are more complicated than others, but all of them have something going for them i absolutely love this game i've played it for over 2,000 hours and in those 2,000 hours uh, i've played it since the start of the game coming out uh, and in those 2,000 hours i followed every single update uh, every single new ghost i've learned a lot by playing i've learned a lot by reading and i'm gonna share all of that knowledge in this one singular video with you i'm gonna not just say everything about every ghost but i'm also going to give you like examples of how you can use all these things in the game it's going to be a, t a chunky one as you can see by the length of the video but you can also see if you go to the bar at the bottom you can see that i've uh, separated this video and every single ghost has its own section so if you are interested in a specific ghost you can just click down on the bar and go to every single ghost we're going to go over them in order of the journal uh which is going to mean that we start by the simple ghost that were added right at the beginning of the game and then we're going to go uh, later and later in the lifetime of Phasmo uh, with all the newer ghosts that came out that usually are a lot more complicated. This game is crazy. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you join us. If you're not subscribed, please do so. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. But let's not waste any more time. Let's hop into the game. Let's go. Alrighty, uh, we got Cory Ramirez. We're just gonna be in the map. Now, I'm not actually gonna be playing the game mostly. I'm just gonna be uh, talking about every single ghost in the game, starting with the spirit. And we'll see how the ghost is gonna mess with us during this. Maybe we'll figure out what the ghost is along the way without using any of the items. Who knows? Uh, we're playing on professional, by the way. But anyway, let me uh, quickly turn on the breaker, and then we're gonna stand in the kitchen, and we're gonna start blasting some knowledge, baby. Well, here we go. So I don't know where the ghost is, but that doesn't matter because we are going to be talking. Starting off, obviously, with the oldest ghost, the spirit. What does the journal say about the spirit? Spirits are very common ghosts. They are very powerful, but passive, only attacking when they need to. They defend their place of death to the utmost degree, killing anyone that is caught overstaying their welcome. Uh, now, what you're going to see a lot in this uh, ghost guide when we are going over all the, the descriptions of the ghost is that a lot of the time, they are just flavor text. They don't actually uh, say anything about the ghost or their hidden abilities. Sometimes they do, which I'm definitely gonna uh, say uh, when that is the case as well. But in this case, the spirit is just kind of a boring ghost. It doesn't even have a strength. It is the only ghost in the game that does not have a strength, like that has a strength in the book. There's some ghosts that arguably don't have a strength because their strength is really only a weakness, but this one truly does not have a strength. It doesn't do anything. The weakness, uh, but it does, however, have a weakness, and it is that the, sp that the spirit can be temporarily stopped by burning smudge sticks near them. Now, every ghost can be stopped when you burn a smudge stick near them. Uh, the, every ghost, most of the ghosts will be stopped for uh, one and a half minutes, 90 seconds. They will not be able to hunt. Now, this also counts for when you smudge them during a hunt. If you smudge during a hunt, it'll keep you safe for six seconds during the hunt, and it'll also start a, a 90 second timer where the ghost can't start another hunt within that timer. However, for the spirit, this is increased to three minutes. So this is a, probably the easiest way you can figure out the spirit. I'm also gonna be talking about every single ghost and how you can figure them out. Obviously, just finding the evidence, you can find EMF level five spirit box or ghost writing, which spirit box is fairly easy. Ghost writing and EMF, not so much though. So if you are uh, left with a spirit, you can just smudge it when you're at 0% sanity. And if you uh, consistently don't get don't get hunted for three minutes uh you can usually say all right i'm dealing with the spirit now i have a cheat sheet over here that i'm gonna be uh looking at every time uh after i finish i feel like i finished talking about a ghost just to make sure i'm not forgetting anything uh so I'm also gonna share with you like when the ghosts hunt and which type of evidence is forced on each ghost uh, as well as just their hidden abilities and stuff like that. So the spirit doesn't have any hidden abilities. It's just this one. This is the only thing it does. You can smudge it and then it'll be deactivated for uh, three minutes instead of 90 seconds. Now, obviously, there's some ghosts that are different, but I'm just gonna talk about every ghost in general. Uh, so, for example, the demon is gonna be deactivated for only 60 seconds, but I'm not gonna be talking about ghosts like i'm not gonna try and talk about every single ghost like every single exception that there is to every rule i'm just gonna talk about that when we get to the demon to make it a little bit more clear i hope 
Um, okay, so the spirit just doesn't have anything, only the 90 seconds. Uh, it is a normal ghost that hunts at 50% sanity. It has normal speed. It will speed up when it's seeing the player during a hunt as well, uh, which some ghosts don't do that. Some ghosts won't be able to speed up. Uh, and that's it. It's just a very simple ghost. Uh, moving on to the Wraith. The Wraith. Wraiths are one of the most dangerous ghosts you will find. It is also the only known ghost that has the ability of flight and has sometimes been known to travel through walls. Uh, this is kind of bullshit, but uh, not like it is mostly led to people thinking the Wraith can do a whole lot of stuff that it actually can't do. However, it does kind of hint at the hidden ability of the Wraith, which is that it can teleport to any of the players on the map. Now, if you're playing single player, it's only going to be teleporting to you. But if you're playing multiplayer, it can teleport to anyone. When it teleports, it'll uh, instantly go towards the player and it'll leave an EMF at the player's location. So if you're walking around with an EMF and you out of nowhere get an EMF 2, which is what it does, you can usually say, wait a minute, maybe I'm dealing with a wraith here, which is, oh God, there's a ghost here, which is one of the ways that I very often figure out a wraith and people are like, how did you know? Uh, other ways you can detect this teleport is by, um, like if the if the ghost you know the ghost room is let's say you know the ghost room is in the dining you walk into the map and all of a sudden the ghost is there or you are on a bigger map and the ghost comes to the entrance out of nowhere even though you didn't see it there before like if the ghost is in places you don't expect it you can usually be like wait a minute maybe it is a teleporting ghost now wraith is one of the most notorious teleporting ghosts uh, which is why people usually think of a wraith when they're having a ghost in a weird weird location now in terms of strength Strength, Wraith almost never touch the grounds, meaning it can't be tracked by footsteps. This is an immediate example of what I'm talking about with strengths that aren't really strengths. Uh, this is a complete, this is just bullshit that it's in the strength category because uh, what does this mean? If you place salt on the ground, the Wraith cannot step in it. Now, it used to be able to step in it, and then it wouldn't leave the UV footprints, which is what you will see if you watch the previous goat, ghost, goat guides, <laughs> ghost guide. However, in current update, oh my god, I'm gonna have to turn that off. In the current update, current update, the uh, wraith simply cannot step in the salt. Now that also meant that they had to get rid of the salt uh, objective, because if you would get a wraith, wraith, you couldn't finish that objective, or if they decided to like get rid of the objective only when it was a wraith, you could immediately rule out Wraith if you saw that objective. So that's why they got rid of the salt objective and put it as a daily daily or weekly objective um, because then it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that is uh, that is the strength that you can... And now, how do you use that, by the way? It's actually extremely easy to use. If you know the ghost room, let's say we know this is the ghost room. In this case, the garage is the ghost room. But let's say we think this is the ghost room. You can place some salt. I usually place it in a line where I think the ghost is going to walk. So I would place it like here, here, and here. And then you can place a motion sensor right there. Uh, going over the salt and then if you see the motion sensor be triggered without the salt being stepped in and that happens like several times or just one time really you can be like wait a minute that is impossible it should step in the salt and it's not doing that then you're dealing with a wraith uh, you don't have to take photos anymore it will just never step in salt like you used to have to do all kinds of other tricks where oh i see a play i see salt be stepped in it could still be a wraith no longer the case if you have salt in the ghost room and it is stepped in you weren't there doesn't matter it will never be a wraith um uh, now the weakness is wraiths are afraid of salt and will actively avoid it this has actually been changed recently um and I don't think, like, there's going to be times in this guide where I'm going to be saying I don't really know this specifically because there's, like, basically no way for the, no way for some things to be, like, 100% sure. I'm only going to, if I'm, if I'm talking about something that is speculative or that I'm not sure, I will say that. Otherwise, I, like, know it for sure because I've talked to the devs or I've played the game so much that I know uh, or I've talked to, or looked at other people's testing such as psycho or something like that so for the wraiths are afraid of salt and will actively avoid it this does not mean from my experience that you can like build a wall of salt and lock the ghosts in the ghost room i'm pretty sure that is not the case it will just walk over the salt it will just completely ignore it basically um and it used to say that wraiths have a toxic reaction with salt uh, but I also don't really know what that meant. I've never known what that meant. It, people speculated, it, like the consensus was 
that when the goat when the wraith steps in salt it'll be more active from that point onwards which could be the case however it's basically impossible to tell unless we like literally talk to dk and go like dk what does it do which he hasn't told us that yet so yeah it is just um it, this this weakness is basically just like <laughs> nothing really it, it's kind of uh like a it's it's flavor text which is really strange that that phasmo does this by the way you're gonna this is this is the tough uh, career of someone who just plays fast or like plays a lot of phasmo um you're you're gonna be dealing with so much bullshit throughout all of it because the devs are really love talking in riddles and love talking about stuff that isn't even in the game aka obake shapeshift for the longest time now it's in there which i'm very excited to talk about that but anyway uh wraith has emf level 5 spirit box and dots projector spirit box is extremely easy evidence to get um emf level 5 and dots projector not so much however the salt is just such an easy giveaway that you don't even need to bother with the evidence most of the time uh and another thing you can do for the wraith is if you know the ghost room is in the boys bedroom over there and i'm here if you have an emf you can just stand here and see if it teleports to you and then you can also place a uh motion sensor right there because when it teleports to you it will do some stuff around you maybe do some ghost events maybe do some interactions and then walk back to the ghost room so it'll uh cross the motion sensor that you've placed and that's how you can figure out hey wait a minute it was here and it walked backwards towards the ghost room because it will just return to the ghost room eventually also the zx rent thank you for the gift subs by the way um now it cannot teleport during a hunt uh, it cannot go through walls during a hunt. It cannot go through in hiding spots during a hunt. Like it can't see through doors and all that stuff. Those were all myths floating around because it, it, it says something about like it can fly and stuff like that. And it can travel through walls. That is just flavor text. As I said, it is kind of hinting at the teleporting ability, but it doesn't mean that it can actually go through walls. Uh, I mean, I guess it can teleport through walls, which I guess is what they mean here. So yeah, that is it. The Wraith has uh, normal hunting. It hunts at 50% sanity, uh, and it uh, has a normal speed of every other ghost. And it'll also increase its speed when it's seeing players. All right, anyway, that's Wraith. Let's move on. These are the simple ghosts, by the way. Just wait until we get to the later ghosts. I'm going to be talking for, like, literally 15 minutes about some ghosts. It's going to be crazy. All right, Phantom. A phantom is a ghost that can possess the living, inducing fear into those around it. They are most commonly summoned from Ouija boards. I love that they still have this here. They just... <laughs> wait, what the fuck? Uh, wait. All right, here we go. Uh, so this is bullshit, <laughs> by the way. I don't know. I, I swear they got rid of this, right? I was looking at my notes and I was like, no, this is, this is not a thing. I don't know why they still have this in here. Uh, it, this, this ghost is nothing with an Ouija board. It is just, a, it's just like a little flavor text. Uh, now it does, however, have a similar ability to the Wraith. It can, uh, go towards any player on the map, but unlike the Wraith, where the Wraith will instantly teleport towards the player, the Phantom will slowly, will like set a destination to a player and then walk there. So, uh, similar to how with the... So if you want to like figure out the difference between a wraith and a phantom, you could set up a motion sensor right there and then be far away from the ghost room. And then if it walks over the motion sensor towards your location, instead of instantly teleporting and then walking back, you can be like, wait a minute, it's probably a phantom, not a wraith. Now there's other much easier ways to figure out a phantom, but uh, that's just purely going off of the, uh, the not teleporting, but the roaming um, hidden ability that it has. Uh, and in terms of emf so the wraith's teleport will give an emf at the location where it teleports to as far as i know the phantom gives the emf this is i'm not entirely sure about this one as far as i know the phantom will give the emf in the like the, the starting location where it'll start its roam towards you which means that unlike the wraith you can't really figure it out using the emf you you won't just instantly get an emf out of nowhere uh it'll be like far away in the ghost room so you won't really be able to tell it that way however if you're in the ghost room you will get an emf uh, an emf2 now an emf2 without anything going on like without anything being thrown or any doors being touched is usually some indication of an of an hidden ability happening so emf2 is a really important thing to keep in mind uh that's like usually what the hidden abilities give um okay so uh strength looking at a phantom will drop your sanity considerably faster um i don't think that does anything <laughs> i don't i think um this is so this is uh this is like speculation i think people have said 
that it will drop your sanity more when it's doing like a ghost event it shows up it during when a ghost is like shows up it'll drain your sanity uh however i don't think that's like increased with the phantom at least it's in no like significant way whatsoever uh this is might as well not exist because you're never going to be able to figure out a phantom this way you're never going to really be hurt by this it's not going to be like oh my god it hunted so early it must be a phantom like it just doesn't do that it's not like the oni where the oni will drop your sanity more when it hits you with a ghost event the phantom doesn't really have an equivalent ability of that now it might do something with draining your sanity slightly more when it shows up but it just uh, comp might as well not exist because it's completely useless i can tell you i've played this game for how long exactly i've played it for 2172 hours and i've never used that whatsoever all right weakness taking a photo of the phantom will make it temporarily disappear now this is going to be the thing that you're going to be using most of the time to figure out a phantom you're not even going to be looking at the evidence even though the evidence is quite easy spirit box fingerprints is easy to get dots not so much but if you can get two evidences easy you're pretty safe um but if the phantom at any point does a ghost event where it shows itself or you summon it with the summoning circle and it does a ghost event that way then you take a photo and it disappears you immediately know oh wait a minute we're dealing with a phantom here now there's some situations in which it can be a little tricky to know if it disappeared because of the photo or it just disappeared by itself uh, and the, you can tell that uh by looking at the photo that you took if you take a photo of the phantom uh it'll say ghost underneath uh the it'll say ghost underneath the photo and you won't see any ghost on the photo now if it's a really dark photo sometimes you can't see if there's a ghost on there then you can look at the glitching effect on the photo if there's no glitching on the photo and it says ghost underneath you almost certainly took a photo of a phantom uh, unless you like took it down a, a hallway in sunny meadows and the ghost was so far away it couldn't even glitch your equipment out yet but at that point like you're you're dealing with you're so much more advanced you don't need these kind of tips uh now much easier way to tell the phantom than taking a photo is using its other hidden ability which is i'm trying to go back to the already did got it to blow out a candle i'm doing it uh is to use the blinking during a hunt the phantom will blink significantly slower during a hunt than any other ghost now what does that mean uh it'll be invisible a lot longer so in between blinks the the duration the ghost will show up and then it'll blink out of existence and it'll be uh, invisible for much longer than usual ghosts uh the oh, it will be uh visible the, i have some some cheat sheets here because i don't remember all these numbers exactly so that it will be visible every one so it when it disappears it'll set a random timer every ghost sets a random timer for the duration of its blink for the phantom this duration will be between one and two seconds so the minimum blink time for a phantom is one second which is really like that's a long blink you'll definitely notice that so the easiest way to rule out a phantom is looking if the shortest blink you saw was shorter than one second because for normal ghosts the blinks are between 0 0.3 and one second so you can either look like did i get a much longer blink than one second or did i get some much faster blinks than than one second and that way you can either go like okay it's blinking much longer or it's blinking way too fast for a phantom that's like the easiest way that's how you usually see me figure out a phantom i don't really take a photo because i mean you can take a photo but you can't really force ghost events so that's just based on luck whereas this you can just figure out anytime so yeah that is uh the phantom uh it is it, it has so it is a pretty is pretty interesting ghost it can both like roam towards a player which any player uh and it can uh it has like a photo ability where it'll disappear and it is invisible longer during hunts which is pretty cool uh let me make sure i haven't missed anything oh yeah it hunts at 50 percent sanity and it's just a normal speed ghost that will speed up during a hunt like any other player uh, but that's the phantom all right moving on poltergeist one of the most famous ghosts the poltergeist known to manipulate objects around it to spread fear into its victims uh this is actually kind of hinting at the strength of the poltergeist so i, I like how the you can like it's kind of backwards and like uh reverse engineering what they meant with this flavor text rather than like the flavor text being useful um if you look at the strength poltergeist can throw multiple objects at once and with great force uh this is probably one of the most well-known abilities in the entire game uh if you make like a large pile of items or just in general when there's multiple items around the poltergeist can throw 
like in an area it can make all the items at once move um which how would you detect it now if you're looking at it you're obviously gonna see there's many ways you can detect the polter throw first thing if you see it you made a pile you see all the items being thrown around obviously it did a polter throw second if you heard something that sounded like multiple items but you're not entirely sure what you can then do is two things first thing you can grab your emf go towards the location get an emf signal then you're like okay i'm getting emf in this location and you see some items on the ground then you pick up one of the items you move them away from the pile and then if the emf is still going you know okay there's still items that were thrown on the emf then you move the emf to the item you moved away and then you're like, oh, but that item is also giving EMF. So if you can figure out if multiple items at the same time are giving an EMF signal, that probably meant that they were thrown at the same time, AKA you're dealing with a polter. Now that, that sounds kind of complicated. It's much easier to just see it or to use the second thing, which is, oh, I heard a polter guy's throw. I'm gonna run to the truck. If you are playing on professional or lower, you will have the, the, the activity chart. If on the activity chart, you see the spike going from zero to 10 instantly, you can be like, all right, I heard a polter's throw. I see a polter's throw on the on the activity chart. I'm dealing with the poltergeist here. So that is uh, uh, how, I, how I usually figure that out. Now, also, when it throws multiple objects at once, it'll drop your sanity by 2% per item thrown which that is kind of relating to this, known to manipulate objects around it to spread fear into its victims. So when it throws a lot of items, like when you made a, make a huge, huge pile with 50 items and it throws all those items, you are down from 100% sanity to 0% sanity. So yeah, that's why building a pile can sometimes backfire, but it, it, seeing the polter explosion is just like, it's, it's a thing you have to have done. Like you haven't played Phasmophobia unless you've seen a polter guys throw a bunch of items at once. It's amazing. It's probably one of the coolest abilities. Now what they've also done with the poltergeist is that they have reworked the throwing recently. Whereas now previously the, uh, any ghost could throw items like super, it could throw them like super short directions. You could just like give them a little ping and then leave them in the same place, which will be kind of confusing. Now every ghost will be more inclined to throw objects upwards uh, and uh, like a little further away. And for the poltergeist, this is doubly so. So the poltergeist will throw things upwards a lot more and it'll throw them a lot further. It's actually so much easier now to figure out if you're dealing with a poltergeist by looking at their regular throws because every single throw the poltergeist will do will be of stronger velocity than any of the uh, any of the other ghosts so you will see like these huge these huge arcs items moving away really far that is like an extremely obvious thing to tell now another thing you can do which actually let me look at the weakness first uh weakness with nothing to throw the poltergeist becomes powerless actually just complete bullshit here <laughs> this just means nothing uh Obviously, I think what this means is that it can't use this ability, which obviously if it can't throw anything, it can't. It's crazy. We are only four ghosts in and the amount of times I've had to say that something in the book is just complete bullshit is <laughs> it's already way too much. But yeah, this means nothing. Uh, it, it will not be able to drain your sanity using its special ability, but that's not really like a thing. You, you rarely will be like, oh my god, I got hunted so early, it must have been a poltergeist. Like, that's, I don't think I've ever uttered that phrase. <laughs> like, I've never really seen the poltergeist drain your sanity too much using its ability. It's just not really that special. Or, it is special, but it just doesn't really do that all too much. So this is just kind of bullshit, because it will still just hunt, which it hunts at 50% sanity, and it is a normal speed go, so the hunts are pretty scary. Like, if it sees you, it'll speed up really fast, and it'll uh, be able to out outrun you very fast. Um, now, during those hunts that you can get, even when there's no items, there's another way to figure out a polter. Uh, the ghost will throw items during a hunt, and for the poltergeist, it will throw objects every... So I think for normal ghosts, it is... If, correct me if I'm wrong, for normal ghosts, if, oh my god, for normal ghosts, if uh, there's an item nearby, every 0 0.5 seconds, there's a 50% chance that it throws an item, right? And for the poltergeist, I, I know the poltergeist ability is that every 0 0.5 seconds, it will 100% throw an item, and I thought that for normal ghosts, it is every 0 0.5 seconds, it, there's a 50% chance to throw an item. So, if which this is actually a much trickier ability than you think it is. Like I have been baited so many times sitting in a hiding spot, hearing like, 
item, 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 and being like, oh, this must be a poltergeist, and then I leave with poltergeist, and I ended up being wrong. Why is that? That is because when a ghost throws an item, what can happen is that it will, like, throw an item, it'll make a sound, and then it'll hit the wall, which will make a sound, and then it hits the ground, which also make a sound. So it can do, like, boom, and then it can bounce again, so it can do, like, it can make one item sound like it's throwing three items at once, whereas it's just really throwing one item, but it's just hitting a corner which is going bounce, bounce, bounce. And that way you can get easily baited. So the, the way I usually figure out, if I can, like if I'm not doing super crazy 24 times difficulty challenges, the way I will figure out a poltergeist is I will spile up a bunch of items on like an area where I can loop it. I will like put a bunch of items here and then I will grab my smudge stick. I will get the ghost to hunt. Nice throw, by the way. I will get the ghost to hunt, and then I will loop it around the kitchen island, uh, where if you can then see it throw something like every 0 0.5 seconds, which can sometimes mean that it'll throw an item, and then before it even hits the ground, it'll throw that same item again. Like, it'll be so obvious that it is a poltergeist if you're seeing it with your own eyes. So I think that it's much more... It's, it's, it's much better to go off of your eyesight then off of what you hear because the hearing can sometimes sound is can be really deceptive so that's just my tip right there uh and then so as i already said well let's look at the evidence it's spirit box fingerprints ghost riding spirit box fingerprints is really easy to get uh well fingerprints depends on the location sometimes like if you have a ghost here it can be harder than if you have a ghost like in a small room with a door um or if you have like a gym ghost in high school or something but especially with ghosts touching doors during a hunt and leaving fingerprints fingerprints shouldn't really give you any issues and then spirit box obviously also easy um which all, all of this is different on nightmare obviously because you only get two evidences on nightmare which means that you might have to get writing which can be really annoying because writing is definitely the hardest evidence in the game by far uh, so yeah, that's it for Poltergeist. Uh, absolutely. Oh. Hey. Hello there. That's our first ghost event, actually. <laughs> this ghost might start hunting at some point. I mean, I've been holding the candle the whole time. But anyway, uh, all right, that was Poltergeist. Moving on to the Banshee. Uh, one of the ghosts that has significantly changed. I don't know if the last ghost guide I did had the old Banshee, like the old, old Banshee with the crucifixes and stuff. It might have. But the Banshee has gotten a lot of changes in the in recent history. Banshee, the singing siren, known for attracting its victims through song. It has been known to single out its prey before making a killing blow. The Banshee is really interesting, and I really like what they've done. I know the Banshee used to be a whole lot stronger, but the Banshee actually has a very clear personality, which especially in multiplayer can be really fun to play against. So, strength. Banshee will weaken their target before striking. I don't this is a little weird but i think this is, the, the banshee has a lot of stuff going for it so might i might sound a bit all over the place while talking about them um so the banshee has a target which uh there's a lot of stuff that uh circles around this target but so at the start of a game the banshee will pick a target and it'll do special stuff with that target now it won't change its target until the target dies there's some misconception that if the target leaves the, the house it'll set a new target until the target enters the house again and then it'll be back to its normal target no as as far as i know which this has been tested by psycho many times uh and also from just personal experience uh if if the, so the banshee will set a target and it'll just be that target until the target dies uh if the target leaves the house the banshee will become a normal ghost in terms of hunting during a hunt if the if the target is not in the house the banshee will just be able to kill anyone but if the target is in the house it'll only be able to to, to kill the target so if you are not the target you can literally dance all over the banshee you can be out of your hiding spot walk around without any trouble you won't be killed you won't be targeted you can however still smudge the ghost for your friend like if you if the target is being chased you have a smudge stick you can still smudge the ghost to save your friend who is the target however it won't actually kill you what will happen is that if the banshee kills the target it'll i think from my experience unless i've been extremely unlucky if the banshee kills the target during that hunt it will be able to kill anyone from that point onwards until the hunt is over then it'll have only the ability to kill its target which means that if you are hiding with the target or uh you're looping with the target and the target dies then everyone will just die uh which means <laughs> that 
that you should be careful. You shouldn't just take this for granted and be like, la la, I can't die, I'm invincible, because you will be able to die. If you're playing on nightmare mode, right? Where the ghost will kill someone and then uh, be able to continue its hunt, because on professional, for example, it won't be able to do that. Uh, all right. So let me think, is that, no, that's not everything about the target yet, because the Banshee, um, so not only can, it can only kill its target during a hunt, it'll also only start hunting based on the target sanity. So if the target has high sanity and is uh, like even outside of the map, it doesn't matter. If the target is 100% sanity, the Banshee will not hunt. The Banshee is usually a normal 50% sanity hunter. However, instead of using the average team sanity, it'll only use the uh, target sanity, which is a really interesting thing. I, I really like that, that they've done that. Um, and it uh, also can has another hidden ability where it can roam towards the target. So similar to a phantom, uh, it can at one point decide I want to go to the target and then it'll walk towards the target and now Unlike the phantom which can go to any player the banshee can only go to its target and similar to the phantom It'll I think leave the EMF in the location where it started its roam So the EMF is not so useful So what you can do is that you can stand far away from the ghost room uh and uh, like place motion sensors in the middle of the map and then see if the ghost ever roams towards you. If it doesn't, for a very long time, you're probably not dealing with the Banshee because the Banshee does its ability regularly. Like it'll regularly go towards the player that is its target. Um, another thing, the Banshee is just full of stuff, man. It's crazy how much the Banshee had. Uh, so the singing siren in the, it says here in the, in the flavor text, that refers to the, uh, to the paramic. If you're using a paramic, you're pointing it at the ghost. Uh, it can sometimes do these like sounds, these creepy paranormal sounds. Uh, and for the Banshee, there is a 30% chance that when it does one of those whisper sounds, which will just sound like really cursed, like, like stuff like that, um, it'll have a 50 or a 30% chance to turn that into a very loud scream. Now, let me, uh, let me see if I can actually, I, I have an example of the scream. Let me quickly get it one second. Um, I have CJ send it to me. CJ, I need to find it. Uh, uh, oh God, you can't search. Here we go. CJ as file. Where is it? Oh my God, CJ sent me so much stuff. I'm trying to find it. Go, 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 go. There we go. So, this is the sound that the Banshee will make. This is why... A oh, God. A lot of people always ask me, how do I know when it's a Banshee? That's the Banshee scream, which is completely different from any of the other s sounds that it makes. So, it is extremely obvious when you're dealing with a Banshee. Uh, you will hear that scream. This... this super loud thing but again it is only 30 percent chance every time it does a scream which means that you can get extremely unlucky which has happened so many times to me you can get extremely unlucky get multiple sounds on the pair mic have like up to i've had up to like six or seven sounds on the pair mic be normal sounds then i left being like all right i guess it's a yure and not a banshee and then it ended up being a banshee anyway so what i tend to do is that i get if i'm if I have to figure out a Banshee, I use the paramic and I wait until I get four sounds. If during all those four sounds, I don't get a single Banshee scream, I'm gonna leave the game considering that it's not a Banshee. If it ends up being a Banshee, I'm just gonna be salty and be like, well game, you suck. I, f I did my due diligence. You were just giving me a terrible luck. That's how I go with it. Um, so yeah, that's the weakness by the way. Banshees can sometimes be heard screaming with a parabolic microphone. Uh, let me make sure that I have talked about everything because there's again, there's a lot to go over. So it'll, uh, oh yeah, there's other things. It'll, so again, about the singing siren. The Banshee will prefer singing ghost events. It does um, more singing ghost events than others, which is actually a really good way to figure out a Banshee. So if you're getting lots of singing ghost events, you could be like, well, maybe this is a Banshee. Now what that doesn't apply to is during the hunt. If you get a singing sound during the hunt don't think like oh it's singing so much no it's just hunting the hunting noise is unrelated to ghost events so don't be like oh it's singing during a hunt it must be a banshee that is unrelated and similarly also don't think it's not singing during a hunt it must not be a banshee just completely disregard that it's nothing to do with the banshee um now when it does those singing ghost events it'll also usual ghosts will drop your sanity by around 10 percent when it does a ghost event 
Uh, Banshees will drop your sanity by an additional 5%, so they will drop it usually by 15%, which is very minimal, so it's kind of hard to see that. Uh, and what's really important about sanity during ghost events is that this is different for every ghost event. If you get an airball ghost event, if it hits you and it makes the noise, it'll drop your sanity. If you get a ghost that shows up, walks towards you, hits you, makes a noise, it'll drop your sanity. However, there's a lot of ghost events where the ghost will just stand right here. It'll just be chilling, looking behind itself, or just like walk or standing still. Uh, if you don't touch the ghost during one of those ghost events, you will not lose any sanity. Uh, and almost all the singing ghost events I usually get are the ghost just standing around. So it's really important that if you want to use the singing sanity drop, you need to physically walk into the ghost so it'll actually drain your sanity. So if you, let's say I know I'm at 100% sanity, the ghost start is singing right there. You need to walk into the ghost, which will then drop your sanity, make the ghost disappear. Then you will go to the truck and check what your sanity is afterwards. So if you don't, if you don't get hit by a ghost event, it'll not actually drop your sanity, which is really important because sometimes you will get a singing ghost event, like you will get three singing ghost events in a row. You will go back to the truck and you're like, wait, my sanity is still 80%. It must not be a banshee. No, no, no might that you have actually didn't lose any sanity because you just didn't touch any of the um didn't touch the ghost during any of the ghost events now uh, as i said banshee can hunt at 50 percent sanity but it'll only use the target sanity uh and it is a normal speed ghost that can speed up during hunt now, i'm pretty sure oh yeah, yeah yeah wait oh i'm i'm pretty sure that's that's all yes if the target is above 50 percent, it cannot hunt and that is it now if that sounds really unfamiliar to you, that is because the Banshee used to be completely different. The Banshee used to have a crucifix ability where it all would be stopped by crucifixes much easier. It used to have an instant hunt where it could hunt at any sanity. All of that stuff has been removed and actually moved towards the demon. So that's old stuff. Now the Banshee has fingerprints, ghost orbs and dots, which ghost orbs and fingerprints are really easy. Especially ghost orbs are really nice because the ghost orbs will always be in the ghost room, which means that for a Banshee specifically, you can figure out the ghost room looking at where the orbs are, and then you can go far away from the ghost room. And if it goes to you all the time, you know, all right, I'm dealing with a Banshee here because it's roaming towards me. So that's for, for the Banshee. All right, well, we're only five ghosts in and we're already uh, talking a lot. As I said, I'm, I'm not gonna leave any stone left unturned. Like I wanna give this, I want this video to just be like the ultimate, <laughs> ultimate guide that I never, like if anyone ever has a question about any of the ghosts, they can just watch this and they have like a little guide about every single ghost. So anyway, that's the Banshee. Let's move on. The Jin. A Jin is a territorial ghost that will attack when threatened. It also has been known to be able to travel at significant speed. Strength. A Jin will travel at faster speeds if its victims it's, is far away. Uh, or if its victims are far away. Well, it doesn't really matter for one victim because it doesn't have like a target like the Banshee. Um, weakness. Turning off the location's power source will prevent the Jin from using its ability. So, the Jin uh, territorial doesn't really mean anything uh people also used to think that the jinn has something with electronic items that if you moved electronic items into or out of the ghost room stuff like that it would be crazier and it will do stuff all just myths um what this territorial refers to is the hidden ability of the jinn which is where if you're close to the jinn it'll sometimes drop your sanity by 25 percent now when it does the 25 percent sanity drop it'll leave an EMF of two on the breaker, which this has been changed recently. It used to leave this EMF on the location where it drained your sanity, which was a lot more useful because if you then, if you would be in the ghost room, all of a sudden you would get an EMF two with nothing happening. And then you would go towards the truck and you would see your sanity be a lot lower than before. You would know like instantly, okay, I'm dealing with the gin here. Whereas now you have to like drop your EMF on top of the breaker, then go in the ghost room. And then if you hear an EMF from far away, you can be like, oh, wait a minute. It might be, a, or it is a gin because it just, used its gin ability, but that is like extremely useless <laughs> most of the time. Um, I don't know why they changed that. I think my my prediction was that they, they changed that because it used, or it should have worked that way from the start, but it was bugged. And then they just fixed the bug without thinking that it was much better the way the bug, the bugged version was much better than the fixed version. That's at least my prediction. Uh, but, and it cannot use this ability by the way, if the breaker is off. Uh, similar to this one, a djinn will travel at faster speeds if its victim is far away. Uh, if you are at a distance of a djinn, it'll uh, go, what is the exact speed? It'll, let me see, djinn 
it'll, instead of moving at the normal 1.7 meters per second, it'll all of a sudden moves at 2.5 meters per second. So it'll move significantly faster, um, which is not as fast as a, as a, uh, a revenant or something, but uh, you can uh, see this extremely easily, especially you can hear it really easily. So how, we, how I would usually test for a gin is I would have the breaker on. I would stand in like a hallway or like some someplace like here. Here you see me do this all the time. And then if the ghost comes around that corner and it instantly sounds much faster, like doom, 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 than it was when it was just roaming, like walking without seeing you, you can instantly know, all right, I'm dealing with a gin here. It's extremely obvious. You can hear it very loudly. Um, that is how I usually figure out the gin. Because what's different between the gin and like other ghosts that have speed uh, is that it has to see you. So it, it will be just a normal ghost, but not, not nothing special to see here until it sees a player at a distance when the breaker is on. If the breaker is off, it won't be do, won't be able to do this ability. It turn off the breaker, which can can perfectly segue me into the other point that the Jin, because its ability is tied to the breaker, will never be able to turn off a breaker. So because this ghost just turns off the breaker, we know that it is not a Jin. Which you see me do this all the time when you watch my video. So will be like, I will be like, oh, the breaker just turned off, cannot be a Jin. Now there are the the Jin can turn off a breaker. The only way the Jin can turn off a breaker is there's a maximum number of lights that can be on in the house at once. If there are, I think it's eight on small maps. I might be wrong, but there's just a, a, a bunch of lights. Uh, if you have, let's say, let's think, I don't know what it is exactly, but let's say it's eight. If you have seven lights on and the Jin turns on a light switch, it'll then be too many lights at once, which will turn the breaker off. So that way the Jin can actually turn off a breaker by turning on too many lights, which that is one of the ways some people are like, wait, it turned off the breaker. How could it have been a gin? That's the reason why. Uh, now, the way you can tell that it is a gin or not, uh, if the breaker turns off by like, if the breaker just turns off, like the ghost turns off the breaker, um, all the lights that were turned on before will remain on. So if you go to the breaker and you turn it on again, all the lights should be on. Uh, that were on before unless you got a hunt because after a hunt all the lights will turn off But let's say you just the breaker turns off you turn it back on all the lights are back on it just turned off the breaker However, if you turn on too many lights all of the lights will turn off and then the breaker will pop So if the all the lights are off after you turn off the breaker It probably went off because you turn on too many lights and not because the ghost actually turned it off Now that's a very niche knowledge, but as as I said I'm gonna talk about everything so <laughs> get your pen and paper ready uh so anyway that's 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 for the gin uh and not being able to turn off the breaker it can also not drop your sanity with its 25 percent sanity ability and it cannot uh be faster when it's far away from you and that's what this weakness refers to turning off the location's power source will prevent the gin from using its ability now the gin has evidence emf level 5 fingerprints and freezing fingerprints and freezing are, are relatively easy emf5 not this can sometimes be really annoying uh but fingerprints and freezing you should find fairly quickly um it can hunt at 50 percent sanity like normal um and that's it uh now the uh, what i didn't talk about is this a gin will travel at faster speeds if its victim is far away well once the gin gets close to you it'll slow down however that is actually kind of pointless now the reason why it's pointless is because the Jin will be able to speed up like every other ghost. It'll be able to speed up as long as it has line of sight of you. So what will often happen is that it'll turn around this corner. It will be super fast and then it'll come towards you and it'll already like be become faster, become faster, become faster. So that by the time it's close to you, it'll already have sped up by having line of sight of you. So you're not really going to hear that drop off. The easiest way to tell a Jin is... Does it instantly become faster when it sees you from far away? And not necessarily does it get slower again when it gets close to you. At least that's for me, I don't really find... I find the instant speed up much easier than the slow down when it gets closer to you. That's for my... That's my opinion, though. Um, all right. So that is the gin. That's everything there is to know about it. Uh, let's move on to the next one, which is Mare. Now, I thought about the Mare... Uh, a little bit ago because uh, the light switch turned on which uh, before I even talk about anything That's probably the most useful thing you can know about a mare if a light switch gets turned on by the ghost You can instantly go into your book and say all right It's not a mare because the mare cannot turn on light switches now a little uh, interesting piece of knowledge is that it also 
counts for keyboards. It cannot touch a keyboard to turn on the monitor screen. That also counts as a light switch. So similarly, when you get the ghost to touch the keyboard, turn on the monitor, which it can turn off the monitor. So keep that in mind. You need to <laughs> make sure that it actually turned the monitor on. And you know, it's not a Banshee or not a mare. And it cannot turn on the TV as well, because the TV also technically counts as a light switch. So it cannot turn on the TV, not a monitor, and it cannot turn on a light switch. Now, it can't just touch a piano. Uh, it can knock on windows, touch doors, etc. It's just TV, monitor, and light switches that it cannot turn on. Uh, what is a common misconception with uh, Mare is that they turn off the breaker more. This is not true. They just turn off the breaker. They can also turn on the breaker. That is has nothing to do with the Mare. The Mare can just do that stuff, it doesn't matter. All right, now let's actually read the text of the mare. A mare is the source of all nightmare, making it most powerful in the dark. Strength, a mare will have an increased chance to attack in the dark. Weakness, turning the lights on around the mare will lower its chance to attack. So the mare will hunt at 60% sanity if it is in a dark place, and it'll be able to hunt at 40% sanity, which is just so so it's lower than the regular if it's in a lit up place. So if you light a bunch of uh, lights, in a room and it doesn't hunt even though you're below 50 you're at like 45 you know all right i might be dealing with a mare here which especially if you're holding a candle as you see i have not been hunted here at all that's because i've been holding a candle this whole time um and the ghost doesn't hunt when you're whole or your sanity doesn't drop when you're holding a candle unless it's a moroi but we'll come to that when we get there anyway um so uh, that, that's it with the the hunting ability it'll hunt at 60 percent or 40 percent now with the drop of nightmare mode I have rarely ever used this anymore. Like it used to be a pretty significant thing that you needed to know about a mare where it would be like you get a hunt and then you immediately go to the truck and then if you're above 50, it would be like, okay, it could be a mare. However, in nightmare mode, you don't have the board. So it's really hard to know if you're at 55 or 49. Like that difference is so minimal that if you can't see it in front of you, you can't really figure it out. So that is why that's kind of useless. Now, another thing, with the mare. So how do you figure out the mare then? Easiest way is to rule it out by getting it to turn on a light switch. If it turns on a light switch at any point, you can rule out a mare. Now, the other thing you can do to figure out if it is a mare is to go into the ghost room and turn on the light switch sometimes because the mare has an ability where if you turn on a light switch and it's nearby, it has a chance to instantly turn off the light switch, uh, which will, it, it'll be very obvious. Like you'll, it, it can sometimes, any ghost can do that like by accident, but if you turn it on and it'll immediately turn it off, you know, like, wait a minute, it's probably a mare. It's one of the ways you can instantly figure it out. Uh, however, what can happen, as I said, is that if you turn on a light switch, some ghosts w would just want it to touch the light switch. It, like, uh, uh, even though you just like you just touching it wasn't in their mind at all they just wanted to touch the light switch so when you touched it they immediately turned it off which made it seem like a mare which that can sometimes happen but usually if you get an instant light switch you know it's a mare now another thing you can actually figure out with a mare this is just from my personal experience i didn't see this in any uh wait let me scroll down um i I'm pretty sure, no, I'm pretty sure this is actually, like, proven by the devs. Um, there's two other things. The Banshee will break lights during ghost events more often than other ghosts. So if you get a ghost that, like, does a ghost event and then the lights explode, you can, you should be like, all right, maybe it's a Banshee. Or maybe a Mare, sorry, I keep saying Banshee. Maybe it's a Mare. And if that happens multiple times, you can be like, all right, probably a Mare. Uh, sorry, I, I keep saying Banshee. I'm sorry, I'm in Mare. Um, the uh, other thing is if you turn on lights in the ghost room and it immediately like becomes less active and goes out of the ghost room like if it constantly starts roaming around changing its favorite room when you keep turning on the lights in there that's another way that i sometimes figure out a mare uh because the mare has a higher chance of roaming away from its room if the lights are on uh, because every ghost has an ability where it'll be able to roam far away except the gorio um far away from its ghost room. This gets turned up for the mare if you turn on the lights in the ghost room. So that's one way you can kind of like figure out, uh, oh, hey, we're dealing with a mare here because it keeps leaving uh, the ghost room when we turn on the lights. So that is, that's all I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm just reading here, it hunts at 50 or hunts at 50% if, no, no, no. It always hunts at 60% if the lights are off and 40% if the lights are on. Uh, now this can be, let's say the ghost room is this. If this is the ghost room and I turn on the light here, it can leave the ghost room 
into the dark garage and then hunt from here at 60% sanity. So you need to turn on a bunch of lights in the area of the ghost instead of just one, because the ghost can leave the room, especially the mare who wants to leave the light and then can hunt from there. So yeah, that is it all about the mare. It's pretty like it has a lot of little things, but mostly you're just looking for, does it turn on a light switch? Does it instantly flick off a light switch? And does it leave the room when it there's lights in that lights on? That's basically all there is to know about the mare. Next one, Revenant, my favorite ghost in the game. And one of the ghosts has been changed recently, uh, which has made it back to being one of the scariest ghosts in the game, which it used to be by far the strongest ghost in the game with a shadow of a doubt. Then all the other ghosts got buffed, except the Revenant. The Revenant was just kind of left behind, which made it worse and worse and worse. Eventually, it wasn't even really a scary ghost at all anymore, which now it is still easily countered, but it is back to being like a really scary ghost. Like, especially it's terrifying. It's not necessarily the strongest ghost, but it is one of the scariest ghosts in my opinion. So, Revenant. A revenant is a violent ghost that will attack indiscriminately. Their speed can be deceiving as they are slow while dormant. However, as soon as they hunt, it can move incredibly fast. Strength. A revenant will travel at significantly faster speed when hunting their prey. Weakness. Hiding from the revenant will cause it to move very slowly. So the revenant's ability is very simple. If it is a hunt and it is not currently chase well it's actually more complicated now but if it does a hunt and it doesn't know where any of the players are it'll be moving much slower like much slower what is the exact speed uh so normal ghosts uh yeah, i don't even i don't i don't have a specific number but it'll be so obvious it's the most one of the most obvious things like it'll just be like doom 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 the footsteps you're listening for the footsteps here like if the footsteps are super far apart uh, you know instantly, all right, I'm dealing with a revenant. One meter per second, one meter per second, which is super slow. So that is, um, that's the easiest way to tell a revenant. Now, what has they, have they changed recently about the revenant? They have made it so much cooler now. Whereas before, if the revenant was being, ch was chasing a player, it would move at an astonishing three meters per second, which is, uh, almost twice as fast as a normal ghost. God damn it. Um, and... Uh, much faster than the player's walking speed. Like, it would just catch up to you extremely fast. Uh, you can, however, out-sprint. If you are sprinting, you can be faster than a Revenant. However, obviously, your sprint runs out, and then you will be chased by a Revenant. But what used to happen is that if you broke line of sight with a Revenant, instead of, like, being smart and still being fast until it's found you, it would instantly slow down as soon as it lost line of sight. So what would happen is the ghost would start hunting. You would already walk away from the ghost room, obviously, because there's a gray spirit and you know you're about to get killed by the ghost in the ghost room. And you would sprint away, you would go around a corner, and the ghost would never find you. And even if it was chasing you, you would be able to sprint. And again, when you're sprinting, you're actually faster than a revenant. So you would be able to sprint around a corner, the ghost would instantly slow down, and you could easily walk towards a hiding spot with no problem. Uh, but then the uh, the absolute awesome patch came around where they changed that. Finally, they finally implemented something that I've been crying for for the longest time. Instead of ins God damn it! Instead of instantly slowing down as soon as it sees or as soon as it lost line of sight with the player, it'll. Uh, oh my god, you son of a bitch! This ghost is such a attention whore. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, it'll. Stay fast, it'll stay uh, fast until it has reached your last known location. So let's say the ghost starts hunting here, it sees me right here, and then I break line of sight. Instead of instantly slowing down and walking at, at towards this location at one meter per second, it'll go towards this location at three meters per second, and then when it reaches this location, it'll look around again, see if it can see another player, if it sees the player, it'll just continue going at three meters per second. But she has, thank you for the five gift subs. Thank you. It'll just continue moving at three meters per second, chasing you down, um, which is a huge change, obviously. Uh, before, it would never be able to catch you in this scenario because you would just break line of sight and it would take forever to get here. Now, it will instantly be here, then be able to catch up to your next loan location. Even though you broke line of sight again, it'll be able to move fast until it reaches this and then it can like chain these, this high speed without, like even though it loses line of sight of you, it can still continue to be fast during the hunt. Now, let's say it gets here and it doesn't see you. 
instead of then immediately slowing down, it'll slow down over the next 2.7 seconds until it has reached the one meter per second threshold. It'll just like go linearly down, get slower until it reaches one meter per second. Jesus Christ, this ghost is crazy. Um, which the car, by the way, is not a light switch. So the mayor can also turn on the car. Interesting, because there is technically lights attached to the car. I didn't even think of that. That is, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I actually don't know that. I think so. I think the mayor can turn on the car. So yeah. Um, Besides that, so this is uh, with line of sight. This is also with equipment, and I think that's the biggest one. So equipment or your audio, like if you talk and it listens to your microphone, this will like alert the ghost to where you are, which will also instantly make the ghost speed up. So let's say I'm here and I have my flashlight on and the ghost is around this corner and it detects me. Oh, you're in that room. It didn't see you, but it will instantly go fast towards this location. Uh, so what's really important if you want to survive against a rev is to turn off your flashlight. Stop talking as soon as you like break line of sight, get around a corner and then go quickly into a hiding spot. Because if you keep your flashlight on, the ghost will be able to keep tracking you. Like let's say in this scenario where it went here and it came to this location, then it didn't see you but you were around the corner here with your flashlight on, it'll still be able to take your flashlight and then can find you anyway, even though it couldn't see you. So it's really important to turn that flashlight off. You see me do this all the time. It's probably one of the most important reasons why sometimes I do stuff where people are like, how the fuck did he live, dude? Like sometimes you'll see me loop a revenant around the car by crouching down, turning off my flashlight and you won't, like it will not see me because if you keep the car between you and the ghost, it won't see you. And if you turn off your flashlight, it'll eventually lose, like forget that you were here. And then it'll be able to like, like it won't be able to find you. So if you keep the car between you by listening to the footsteps, you will be able to survive against a rev or any other ghost. It's really important. So yeah, turn off your equipment and turn and make sure you're not using like open mic and screaming at the ghost. Um, which that is a huge change, obviously. And it is a really fun change in my opinion, because it made no sense for the Revenant to be like, if it is supposed to be significantly faster when hunting their prey, if it knows someone is somewhere, like it knows you're there, it's moving towards the location that it knows a player is around, why would it be slow? Like it's hunting you, it should be fast, which is exactly what it is now. So while it knows, so if it knows of a player location, either by seeing the player, by hearing the player or by detecting its equipment, it'll move fast. If it at any point loses all three of those, it'll then get slower until it moves at a super slow speed. So the safest thing you can do against a rev is either make as much distance as possible and make sure it can't see you and turn off your equipment or um, to just be away from the ghost room, like not even be there. You don't wanna be with the, with the revenant um, because it's gonna be crazy fast. Uh, they did, however, make the Revenant pretty easy to detect because if you're not in the ghost room, you can hear it instantly. Like, you never have to be chased by a Revenant. Unlike a Djinn, where you have to be seen by the Djinn in order to get its ability, for the Revenant, you can hear immediately that it is slow. So yeah, it's really obvious that way. But anyway, really cool ghost. Absolutely love this one. Very scary. Because the sound of the footsteps when it's chasing you at max speed is like, do 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 It's so scary. It's amazing. Uh, now, the evidences of the Revenant is Ghost Orb, Ghost Running, freezing temperatures ghost orbs and freezing are fairly easy ghost riding once again the hardest evidence in the game um but you can usually just figure out a revenant during a hunt which is the more easy way anyway that's the revenant moving on shade a uh, shade a shade is known to be very shy there is evidence to just suggest that a shade will stop all paranormal activity if there are people nearby strength shades are much harder to find weakness the ghost will not enter a hunt if there are people nearby. Now, this ghost, I feel, is a little broken at the moment. I don't know if that's true. Uh, I don't know if other people have uh, recognized this poison. Thank you for the five gifts, by the way. So, the first thing, a shade cannot hunt until you reach 35% average team sanity, which is probably the easiest way you can figure it out. Because let's say you're at 40% sanity, you look at the chart, you're at 40%, you just hold a candle, if it never hunts, because every other ghost except the mare, if it's in light, should be able to hunt, well, and a Dio, but there's some, most ghosts, almost every single ghost should be able to hunt if you're below 50% sanity, um, but the Shade can't. The Shade can only hunt at 35% sanity, which is extremely low. So if you don't get any hunts for a long time, this is even obvious in nightmare mode where you can't see your sanity. If it doesn't hunt for a really long time, you can be like, all right, it's probably a Shade. Um, now, uh, What's 
there's a lot of little things about the shade i'm just gonna talk like talk about them really quick the shade has a uh high chance like 66 percent i have here but i don't know that for sure obviously because it's really hard to know those numbers but it has a much higher chance to show up as a shadow during uh during a ghost event so if you see a shadow um a shadow ghost event you know all right we might be dealing with like if you see that a lot we might be dealing with a shade here um it also really important if you're at 100 percent sanity the shade has zero percent chance to do a ghost event the it'll get progressively more a higher chance to get a ghost event until you reach 50 percent sanity whereas it will become like a normal ghost again it will just do ghost events like usual but if you get a ghost event at 100 percent sanity you know instantly all right we're dealing with we're not dealing with a shade it can't do that um so that's a really obvious way if you don't get any ghost events or it takes a really long time for ghost events to show up you know you're dealing with a ghost that's that's potentially a shade um now i think this the other thing that i've written down here and that i used to use all the time i think this is broken um the shade used to and this is confirmed by cj by the developers uh the shade used to not throw anything not hunt at all if there was a player in the ghost room so if you were in the ghost room and you had a crucifix there and it uses the crucifix you know instantly all right it is not a shade now that used to be super effective but recently i have complete like i have stopped using this at all because i got baited so many times there were like five times in recent history where a shade would hunt in the exact same room where i was with a crucifix, the crucifix would be used up and it would like, or it would just literally start its hunt without a crucifix on top of me. And I would be like, well, guess it's not a shade. I would rule out shade and then it ended up being a shade anyway. So this, I think it's just bugged. It should work this way. So hopefully in the future, this will be something you can use again. If you see items being thrown around activity and it hunts while you're in the room, you can instantly rule out, all right, this is not a shade, but this is currently bugged as far as I know. Like I've seen this not work anymore. Um, that's it for the shade, fairly simple ghost. It's just less active overall as well. That's like another thing. If there's, shades are actually really obvious. Like if you just get very little activity, you're like, what the hell is going on? Now, another thing people often do is if you can't find the ghost room or like in a large map, it's probably a shade, I can't find the ghost room. That doesn't have to be the case because sometimes the ghost could be in the basement or it could be in a tricky room that you're not hearing any activity from but it can be an indication if you really can't find the ghost room uh that might be the strength here that that you that it's doing so little activity you can't find it so yeah that's a if it's all of a sudden you leave the house and you see lots of activity on the board when there's no one in the house you can also be like maybe it's a shade this is just like tiny things just in general low activity uh is what you're looking for with the shade now it is emf5 Ghost riding and freezing temperatures, which is ex extremely mean because EMF level 5 and ghost riding are bound to activity. You can't get EMF 5, you can't get ghost riding unless the ghost decides to do something, which for the shade is going to be much lower. So the shade is actually really hard to find sometimes. Uh, the freezing temperatures is obvious, but that can be really annoying. But anyway, there we go. That is shade. Uh, moving on to. I thought Oni was going to be right behind that, but it's not. Moving on the demon now demon one of the scariest ghosts in the game demons are known to be the most aggressive so by the way shades also move at normal speed and they will speed up during a hunt when they're seeing a player obviously if i if i don't say that that that's the default uh, demon demons are the most aggressive ghosts we've ever encountered known to attack without reason they seem to enjoy the thrill of the hunt strength Demons will initiate hunts more often than other ghosts. Oh, I turned off the breaker. Demons will initiate hunts more often than other ghosts. Weakness, demons fear the crucifix and will be less aggressive near one. So, um, the strength first. The demon has a two folds in which it can hunt a lot more. First off, it can hunt at any sanity sometimes. If it could just decide, it doesn't even have to be close to you as far as I know. It can just be like, I'm going to hunt now. Even if you just walk into the map, it can instantly start a hunt. This is one of the ways you can tell it's it's a demon. Uh, if you get a hunt right away or you get a hunt above 50, like super above 50, like 90% sanity, you know instantly, all right, we're dealing with a demon here. Um, so that's, that's one of the ways. The other way is that a demon will be able to hunt naturally at 70% sanity, which is extremely high. That means that very quickly when you're in the game, like three minutes in, if you're in the dark, it can hunt already, which is going to be extremely obvious and also very, very scary. So you will be able to be hunted much sooner. Uh, the weakness, 
the demons, uh, uh, if you place a crucifix, if you place a crucifix now, you can actually see the range of the crucifix. Um, for the demon, it, 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 the normal range is three meters. For the demon, this is an additional two meters. So it's going to be five meter radius, which you think that's only an increase of two meters. But because you're talking about a circle here, like you're talking about a radius, an increase of two meters is absolutely massive. That increases the volume of the, the sphere where it can't hunt by a lot. Like by by, I think if someone calculated it, it's like it's it's much more than two times. Like it increases it by a, by a huge amount. Um, so if you place, for example, the crucifix in here, it'll stop it in both this room and this room. So you can just place two crucifixes in the middle here, and if it stops it 100% of the time, uh, you know, like, all right, I'm not dealing with the demon here because it's just continuously eating the cru or I'm dealing with the demon here because it's eating the crucifixes, even though I place them super stupid. Like if you have a room like this and this is the ghost room, you want to place the crucifixes in the middle because they're going to cover the most of the ghost room. However, if you place them here and they still work reliably, you know, like, all right, uh, it's probably a demon. Um, now, the demon also has some other, some little things that make it more aggressive. Normal ghosts uh, will have a 25% second cooldown between hunts where it um, cannot hunt again. So every, the, after a hunt ends, it will be at, at least 25% second, or 25 seconds, sorry, until it hunts again. For the demon, this is only 20 seconds. So if you get a hunt to happen within the 20 to 25 seconds after a hunt, you know, or, oh, I'm dead. Oh, no, never mind. That's a, that scared the shit out of me. I thought I was going to die. Okay. If you get a hunt between 20 and 25 seconds after uh, another hunt, you know, all right, we're dealing with a demon here. Another thing is that smudging the ghost, you know how I talked about smudging when we were looking at the spirit, where when you smudge the ghost when it's a spirit, it'll be in deactivated for three minutes instead of 90 seconds. Uh, the demon is another exception. The demon will only be disabled from hunting for 60 seconds instead of 90 seconds, which is extremely short, which means that if you have a demon on a big map, you can't, like, smudging it will mean you can't even leave the map before it can hunt again. Like, it can... It's really hard to prevent a ghost, or prevent a demon from hunting by using smudge sticks, but it's really easy by using crucifixes, which I think is really cool. So crucifixes are much more important against a demon. Um, and I think that's it. There used to be some ability with the demon where it would use less sanity when using the uh, cursed possession. That's just removed now. The demon doesn't have that anymore. It'll just use as much sanity as as any other ghosts. Uh, in terms of evidence, fingerprints, ghost riding, freezing temps. Fingerprints, freezing temps are easy. Ghost riding, hardest evidence in the game. But demon can be extremely obvious when it hunts early. Um, if you smudge the ghost during a hunt, by the way, as far as I know, there's no, like, shorter duration. Uh, it will be disabled for six seconds. So when you smudge a ghost while it's hunting, it'll stop targeting you for six seconds so you can get away from it. This will be the exact same for demon. Uh, it'll just be disabled for shorter than the other ghosts. So that's a demon, extremely dangerous. Like, don't don't get it twisted. Hunting at 70% sanity is extremely strong, um, and being able to hunt at any sanity on top of that is also extremely strong. So demons are actually really scary, and they can speed up by just chasing you during a hunt. They will get faster. So they're one of the, honestly, the most dangerous ghosts in the game, in my opinion. Especially for new players, when it can take a long time until you get any evidence, demons can be really, really scary. All right, moving on to the Yure. Now, the Yure is a contender, together with Gorio, for my absolute least favorite ghost in the game. I hate Yureis. I really dislike them um, because they have so little going for them. They're so boring. Let's talk about them. Yure. A Yure is a ghost that has returned to the physical world, usually for the purpose of revenge or hatred. Uh, strength. Yures have been known to cause to have a stronger effect on people's sanity. Weakness. Smudging the Yure's place of death will trap it temporarily, reducing how much it wanders. The Yure is extremely simple. Uh, when you are... Uh, when you're... So people often think, when they read this, Yure's have been known to have a stronger effect on people's sanity, that the passive drain of your sanity is going to be higher against the Yure. I don't know why that's not the case. That would make so much sense. I, don't, I forgive you completely for thinking that. It is, however, not the case at all. The Yure have an ability where it will, like, similar to the Jin, where it can randomly decide to drop your sanity when you're close to it by 15%, by around 15%. 
Uh, which, if you remember, the Jin does this by 25%. So it's already a weaker Jin. Like, it does so... <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, the Jin drops your sanity by 25% san 25% sanity on top of being it. Dude, this ghost is the most annoying ghost I've ever faced in my life. <laughs> so it, it can... Uh, it's already a weaker Jin in that regard, and it doesn't have any, like, special ability during a hunt at all. Like, it can't speed up or something. Um, and on top of that, so the, the sanity drain is only 50%, it'll also give itself away when it does this ability. Because when it does the 50% the sanity drain, it'll... It's supposed to close the door, like, no matter how open it was. Like, if it's like this, it'll instantly close... or not instantly, but it'll, like, very rapidly close this door. Um, however, that's bugged right now. That used to be extremely obvious. Right now, it seems like the Jure only touches the door like two times without even moving it at all. And before that bug, it used to open the door instead of closing it. So it's so stu I don't know what they're doing with the Jure. They're ruining it. Like they're making it so hard to detect this ability. Uh, it used to be extremely obvious it would just close the door, but now you kind of have to do this where you have to like set it in the middle because it can either close the door or open the door, um, which can make it really hard to know if it even happened. Now, if you think it happened you can go to the truck and see if your sanity is 15 percent lower than you think it should be but it can be really hard to figure it out uh, and then the other thing smudging the yure's place of death will trap it temporarily if you smudge the yure for 90 seconds it won't leave the ghost room which is completely useless it is so stupid that that is the only weakness it has so this is extremely rare for you to be able to tell the yure using its strength because it is really rare and um it is also extremely broken right now. Uh, the weakness is even less useful because if you smudge a ghost, there is no guarantee it'll suddenly start roaming. So if you place like a motion sensor on the on the door right here and you smudge the ghost and then you see the motion sensor be triggered, you can go like, all right, it's probably not a Yure because it just left the ghost room after I smudged it. However, um, if you don't see a trigger the motion sensor, you can't be like, all right, it's instantly a Yure because it stayed in the room because most ghosts will stay in the ghost room most of the time. So it's like kind of completely pointless. What I've suggested many times, and I don't know why they haven't done this yet, is, oh my God, they're gonna break the lights. Look at this, there you go. <laughs> uh, the reason why I knew is because the lights were on. Usually the ghost will turn off the lights when it when it does a ghost event. Um, oh my, well, it's not America's it turned on the light earlier, but anyway. Um, so it's just completely useless. What I would love to see this ability be turned into that if you smudge a Yure, it'll instantly leave the ghost room. That way, if you smudge the Yure and it immediately triggers the motion sensor going out of the room, you know, all right, we might be dealing with a Yure. You try that again, you smudge it again, it leaves the ghost room again. Oh, we are definitely dealing with a Yure. Like it would, it would just flipping this ability into, instead of staying in the ghost room, making it leave the ghost room, would make it a super useful ability to figure out the ghost. It wouldn't make it like too obvious. You still have to place the motion sensors and like think to figure it out. But every time I suggest that super simple change they could do to make the Yure like not as annoying as it is right now. Because if currently, if you have to figure out a Yure without evidence, it's just like a complete disaster. It takes forever. You can't, you have to rule out literally all the other 23 ghosts before you can say it's a Yure. It's the hardest to figure out ghost based on uh, no evidence, except like the, the Gorio, I guess, uh, which is why I hate the Gorio too. <laughs> So yeah, they, the, the reason why they say they don't want to do that is because they have a lot of plans with the Yure. They want to completely rework the Yure for Horror 2.0. They want to give it very special ghost events and stuff like that, which is really cool. But I wish they would have just do a small, simple change right now to just make the Yure less annoying. But that's all there is for the Yure. It hunts at 50% sanity, uh, speeds up like a normal ghost. Nothing to see there. It has a ghost orb, freezing temps, dots projectors. Dots projector is definitely the hardest one. Just go for ghost orbs and freezing temperatures. Uh, and then... Just hope it does its ability, which is not guaranteed. Again, extremely annoying ghost. Now, we're, got, we're, we're halfway. We're an hour in, <laughs> a little over an hour in, and we're halfway reaching into Oni, which I don't think is even much slower than the last time because I, I talked for two hours and there were less ghosts then. So anyway, um, Oni. Onis love to scare their victims. Also, Lindsay, thank you for the five gift subs. Thank you. Onis love to scare their victims as much as possible before attacking. They are often seen in their physical form, guarding their place of death. Oh yeah, interesting. I haven't even read this since they changed this. Well, Onis are much more active whilst people are nearby and will drain their sanity faster when manifesting. 
Weakness, Oni disappear less often while hunting their prey. So Onis have gotten a pretty significant rework re lately that has turned them from a ghost that was almost undistinguishable from any other ghost into one of the most obvious ghosts out there. Um, there's many ways you can figure out an Oni. First thing, the Oni will do a lot more ghost events uh, than other ghosts, which is how you can instantly distinguish between an Oni and a Shade. And on top of that, it cannot ever do an airball ghost event when it does like it turns into an airball and it flies towards you like you can see the ball this ball of mist and then it touches you and it does like a uh hiss that's if you see that you can instantly be like all right we're not dealing with an oni you see me do this all the time if you've watched any of my videos all the time i'll be like this is not an oni you probably already knew this um so yeah that is one way you can figure out an oni uh if you get lots of ghost events you can figure out an oni uh other thing if it, this is the the strength when it does a ghost event and it touches you or you walk into it, instead of dropping your sanity by 10%, it'll drop your sanity by 20%, which is a huge change. So like that, if you knew your sanity was at 100, you get a ghost event and you leave the house and you see your sanity is at 80%, then you know like, all right, we're dealing with an Oni here because that is way too much. Uh, but there's even a more, more easy way than that to figure out an Oni, which is using its weakness. Uh, if you remember, the Phantom, blinks uh, is a lot more invisible during a hunt than other ghosts the oni is the complete opposite when it's hunting it'll blink between what is the exact duration uh wait i'm looking at this uh i don't think i have the yeah i don't have the exact amount like the exact range at which it's blinking but it is extremely obvious i think it is between 0.1 one and 0 0.5 or something like that like it is it's never gonna be like a long blink it's always gonna be visible for most of the duration of the hunt so it's gonna do like a short blink and then it's visible for a while short blink visible blink blink like it's it's hard to figure this out if you're not looking for it like a lot of the time i will be looping a ghost and then all of a sudden i will be like wait a minute we're dealing with an oni here aren't we because it's unlike the phantom where the phantom is extremely annoying like it's like oh i can't see this ghost at all it's instantly a phantom when you can see the ghost it doesn't trigger your like anomaly sensors and where you're like oh wait a minute it's an oni because i'm having too easy of a time like you're kind of distracted by just being like doing playing well that you forget to check for oni that's what i do a lot of the time so make sure you're actively checking for an oni if you see it never do a long invisibility blink and it's just blinking super fast and visible all the time you know it's an oni it's extremely obvious uh, that's how i usually figure out onis now onis have emf level 5 freezing temperatures and dots uh which i would just use the hunting ability honestly even if i'm playing professional just get a hunt figure it out that way they can hunt at 50 percent sanity they speed up like other ghosts um but yeah they're extremely obvious that way that's it for the oni love this ghost one of my favorite because i love active ghosts now finally over halfway we're going to be talking about, uh, this is the first ghost. So the first 12 ghosts were the ghosts that were added at the start of Phasmo. All the ne the next ghosts we're going to be talking about were added during the lifetime of Phasmo starting from 2020. Uh, so Yokai was the first, Yokai and Hantu were the first ever ghosts to be added. Yokai. Yokai are common ghosts that are attracted to human voices. They can usually be found haunting family homes. Strength. Talking near a Yokai will anger it, increasing the chance of attack. Weakness. When hunting, a yokai can only hear voices close to it. So, the strength for a yokai is a, if you're talking near it, like using the spirit box, which, spoiler, it has spirit box evidence, which I think is really clever. If you're talking near a yokai and your sanity is below 80%, it can hunt, like, immediately when it hears your voice. Now, you can kind of use this. So, if you're close to a ghost and it hunts early... You can be like, all right, maybe it's a yokai. However, let's say I'm here and the ghost is over there and I'm probably not even talking, for example, and it still hunts early, you know it's not a yokai because for a yokai to early hunt, you have to talk to it. You have to like make noise and you have to be close to the ghost. So if, the if you were talking close to a ghost and it hunted early, you can be dealing with a yokai, otherwise not. And then the thing that I use the most, which you will often see me do, when hunting, a yokai can only hear voices close to it. Uh, the yokai can only hear, hear voices at, uh, I think it's about two meters. I don't know the exact range, but it is extremely obvious. If your flashlight is going crazy, you often see me do this in Willow Street House, where I will stand behind the glass do doors 
I will stand behind the glass doors. And if the ghost just walks into the kitchen and out of the kitchen and it just like doesn't give a shit about me, even though I have my flashlight on, because it doesn't just hear voices. When hunting a yoke, I can hear voices close to it. It also detects your equipment at a much shorter range. So it has to be much closer to you before it can detect your equipment. Now you will even notice this at a range like this. If I will be looping the uh, yokai around this truck, by the time it's around that corner, it will already lose track of me. Like it can double back in really weird ways because this is already enough distance for it to stop knowing where you are. It is extremely obvious. Like if the ghost seems stupid, it can't find you. Like, for example, you're walking away from it and it just lost you so easily or you're standing somewhere with your flashlight on and it's going crazy during a hunt, but it still doesn't find you. You can often tell, hey, it's a yokai. That's like the easiest way I usually tell yokai. You can even do this with no items at all. Like 24 difficulty, you can still figure out a yokai that way, which is what I usually use. Okay, now the activity also increases slightly when you're talking near it. Like it just, it just, the more you talk, the more active it gets. It'll hunt, it'll be more active. Um, uh, oh, interesting. I didn't even know, that. I wrote this down because of the, <laughs> I was looking up some stuff. So I, I had some extra stuff to talk about as well. This was one thing I learned uh, uh, when, when researching for the ghost guide. The yokai, when you're using a music box, will start the ghost event leading into the hunt from closer than uh, than any other ghost. Because any other ghost will be able to hear you, will be able to hear the music box from further away. So if you, it's, it's not that useful, but it's kind of it's kind of a cool little thing to know about. Like if you walk towards a yokai and it only starts its hunt when you're super close to it, uh, unless like. And instead of starting it like from around over here, you know, hey, I might be dealing with a yokai, or I am dealing with a yokai here, which is just a very nice little little bit of knowledge. But yeah, that's the yokai. Pretty cool ghost, pretty scary as well. Like the any ghost that can early hunt is immediately very scary. 80% is very strong. It's higher than a demon, remember? Uh, well, not the demon can hunt at any percent sanity, but this one, uh, like its ability can also let it hunt higher than. Uh, uh, higher than 80 or higher than 50% sanity, which what you saw right there, by the way, is an airball ghost event. That's what I was talking about when I was talking about Oni. So not an Oni. <laughs> this is not an Oni. What do we have? It's not an Oni. It's not a mare. And it's not a Jin. Those are the ghosts we've like ruled out. <laughs> it actually seems extremely like it, for the amount of time we've been here, it's done very little. Like it might genuinely be a shade or something. I should probably go out real quick to take a pill because I, I might be reaching low sanity. Um, so yeah, that's the yokai. Moving on, let, let's talk about uh, the next ghost before we get out. <clears throat> yokai. So yokai Hantu were the first ghost to be added. Uh, once again, I love about the yokai that it has spirit box because that would make it. That's gonna make it angry, which is really cool. Um, Hantu. A Hantu is a rare ghost, which, by the way, oh my god, common and rare doesn't mean anything. It is, like, it, the spirit says the most common ghost. Every single ghost has the exact same, what the hell, my sanity is so high. Every single ghost has the exact same chance to, uh, to appear. There is no such thing as a common or a rare ghost. Um, so that is just flavor text. It's just bullshit. Um, uh, Hantu? Hantu is a rare ghost that thrives in the coldest climates. The cold seems to make it more aggressive and empowered. Strength. Lower temperatures allow the Hantu to move at faster speeds. Weakness. Hantu moves slower in warmer areas. Now, the Hantu has a few things that are extremely niche. But the main thing about the Hantu is... It's also our first ghost, by the way. First of all, um, this is something I haven't talked about yet. But it's our first ghost that has a guaranteed evidence. If you only... If you ha use custom difficulty to set your evidence to one... The Hantu will always give you freezing temperatures because its strength is related to the freezing, the, to the temperature. So if you are playing on nightmare mode and you get fingerprints and ghost orbs, uh, it says that like, you get fingerprints and ghost orbs. Hantu seems to be an option according to the book right here, but because it's nightmare mode and it gave two evidences, you know it cannot be a Hantu because the Hantu should always give you freezing. So that's... Um, that's that's one thing you can use to to, to figure out if it's a hantu or not. Um, now the main thing the hantu does is that if it is cold by either being snow outside or uh, it is the breaker is off or it's in its ghost room where it's freezing temperatures, it'll be much faster. You can hear this 
very obviously um, it'll just be like super fast when it starts its hunt and then it leaves the ghost room and it slows down. Another way you can easily tell a haunt to is by turning on the breaker, having it be super warm. Then you can loop it around a place like this and it is the first ghost we've seen that won't speed up. It will not speed up the longer it sees the player. It will, the speed is only based on the temperature in the room it is in. Now it can get slightly faster while you're looping it because it'll um, lower the temperature if it is in a room. So during a hunt, this will also happen. So the temperature can get slightly slower while looping it, which can make it go faster. But if you've had the breaker on the whole time, you shouldn't really worry. Um, it's it's gonna be fine. Like you, you're, you're gonna be able to loop it the whole time, even without a smudge stick, which is extremely obvious. Um, the Hantu is also the first ghost, it's similar to Jin, where Jin cannot turn off the breaker. The Hantu cannot turn on the breaker because its uh, ability, its strength, is based on it being cold. Turning on the breaker is going to increase the temperature of all the rooms, which would weaken the Hantu. Therefore, it cannot turn on the breaker. So that's how you can rule out a Hantu. Um, and the Hantu is also the only ghost in the entire game that has some... Uh, that, that has an inclination to turn off the breaker more than other ghosts. So if the breaker keeps turning off a lot, you can be like, all right, maybe we're dealing with a Hantu because the Hantu will turn off the breaker more than other ghosts. Uh, now, I think those are also, let me read about the exact ghost speed. If the temperature is higher than 15 uh, degrees, it'll only move at 1.4 meters per second, which is the, the default speed is 1.7. Uh, and the fastest speed that it can move at is 2.7 meters per second, which is slightly faster than the Jin, which is extremely fast. If it's zero degrees, it's going to be super, super fast. So be careful with that. Uh, I think the easiest way is just have the temperature high and then loop it or listen to it from a distance. Like if it sounds extremely fast and also if it's like going up and down in speed, like it, all of a sudden it's fast and it's slow, then it's faster, then it's slower. While it's not chasing anyone, you can also think, hey, this might be a haunt too, because there's very few ghosts that can increase and decrease their speed during a hunt without chasing someone. The only other ones is like Raichu and Hantu really. So if that happens, you can rule out Hantu as well. Now there's one thing that I could just completely forget about, not mention at all, because it is completely useless. However, I'm telling it because I'm talking, telling you everything. If the breaker is off, the Hantu has a special ability that during a hunt, it'll show you very rarely when it's visible, it'll show you like the freezing breath as if you're in a ghost room that has freezing temperatures. It'll show you that during the hunt. However, this will only show up if the breaker's off. And it'll only show up if the ghost is like visible during a blink, like you see it. That's the only time it will show up. And it is also extremely hard to see, which this is such a pointless ability. I don't even know why they bother touching it because they changed this recently. Uh, it is so useless because who would ever in their right mind turn off the breaker against a Hantu and then start looping it in the dark, which makes it extremely hard to see the ghost because it's dark. And then you're going to look while it's like super fast because obviously it's getting colder when the breaker's off uh so it's getting faster and faster which is super dangerous why the fuck would you ever do that just leave the breaker on and just loop it and see if you can do that without being killed like it's completely pointless there's never a reason you want to do that not even on 24 times difficulty like even if you don't have the breaker at all you still don't want to use this ability because you can just listen to it being much faster than usual ghosts. Like, there is never a... There is not a single situation wherein you ever will use this. The only time I can ever see that being useful is if you... Like, let's say you have the breaker in this room, and then the ghost... It is super high temperature because I've had the breaker on the whole time. Then the, the haunt walks into the room. You then turn off the breaker, and then you look at the freezing breath. So it's still warm... But even then, you could just loop it, right? There's literally... Even then, it's useless. Like, there's no point. The ability is completely useless. There's not a single use case where you can ever use this, which it doesn't make any sense. I don't know why they have this. So, yeah, completely useless. Onto hunts at normal speed. Uh, hunts at normal sanity. Um, so, not speed. The speed is special. But it hunts at 50% sanity, uh, and it won't speed up during a hunt, which is very special. So, keep that in mind. Uh, fingerprints, ghost orbs, freezing temps, which, once again, the freezing temps is a fixed evidence. So, keep that in mind. That is the Hantu. Pretty cool ghost. Pretty scary as well, especially if you got, like, a uh, snowy weather outside. It can be extremely fast. Um, if you... Oh, what's really cool is when you're on, like, a campsite map, 
the Hantu is extremely scary because outside the temperature doesn't go up while you turn on the breaker. So it's going to be super fast on Camp Woodwind and Maple Lodge. However, if you turn on the campfire, the campfire has ex is extremely hot. So if you're looping it around the campfire, it'll be super slow in the area of the campfire, which is one way you can figure it out. But anyway, that's the Hantu. Moving on. Gorio. Probably my least favorite ghost in the game. I absolutely hate the Gorio. Um, it is... Uh, let's, just, let's just read it and I'll talk about it. When a Gorio passes through a dots projector, using a video cam is the only way to see it. Uh, strength. A Gorio will usually only slow itself on, show itself on camera if there are no people nearby. Weakness. They are rarely seen far from their place of death. The Gorio is actually really simple and especially in terms... Like, it's the worst ghost they've added. Like, there's some ghosts, like the shade is extremely boring, but Gorio is a new ghost. They've added this ghost, and it's so boring. So the only thing the Gorio, the Gorio has two things. If, so it has dots evidence. Um, you can only see this dots evidence when you're looking through a video cam. So you cannot see it with the naked eye. Like if you have a dots projector here, you will never see dots. If you see dots without using a video cam, you can rule out Gorio. Um, on top of that, Let's say I have a I have a, a dots projector here. In order to see dots on the video cam, you should leave the ghost room, which you can stand right here because this is another room. You can stand just like, let's say it's in there. You can stand outside of the room. You don't have to be very far. You just have to be out of the room. And then you look at it through a cam and see if it's dots, uh, see if dots shows up. Now, because its ability is related to dots, this is the second ghost that has a fixed evidence. You will always get dots when you have a Gorio, unless you're doing a zero evidence run. Uh, so if you don't get dots, if you get EMF level five and fingerprints on nightmare mode, you know instantly, all right, we're not dealing with a Gorio because it has to have dots. Um, so that's, that is the strength, by the way. The strength in the flavor text here is you can only see it on a cam, so you can't see it with the naked eye, and it'll only do it if you're out of the ghost room most of the time. Um, now, what's kind of hard about Agorio is that you have to see it when you're in the house, because if you place a camera and you see dots in the truck, you can't figure out if that's Agorio dots or not, right? Because, um, some, like, you can't, you're not there, so you can't see if it was only visible on the camera or not. Uh, now, how I usually figure out Agorio is if I'm having a terrible time and I hate my life and I'm getting no evidence whatsoever because EMF level five, so it has dots projector, which you can't see with the naked eye and EMF level five, which EMF level five can be really hard to. If you don't get anything to happen and you're just sitting there with like only fingerprints or something and you don't get any evidence for 20 minutes, you're like, wait a minute, I'm just dealing with a stupid Gorio. You use the video cam, you get instant dots and you're like, well, fuck my life, I'm gonna leave now. Um, that's that's how I usually figure out a Gorio because they're just, obviously they're always gonna have dots, which means you always have to figure it out using the video cam, which is extremely annoying. Now the weakness, which they recently added, by the way, this used to be broken completely. The Gorio used to roam even more than other ghosts. Holy fuck, they, I don't know how that ever was a problem. Uh, it used to roam twice as much as other ghosts. Oh God. No, 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 I don't want to be touched. Oh, I got touched anyway. Um, but uh, now they have finally made it so that they are rarely seen far from their place of death. And now they can never change their ghost room. So if you have, for example, the mirror and you open up the mirror, you see that it's a garage ghost. Then later on in the game, you open up the mirror again and you see that it's now a kitchen ghost. You can instantly rule out Gorio because the Gorio can never change its ghost room, which is also the only way on a zero evidence run you can rule out a, or you can figure out a Gorio. If it simply never changed its favorite room, you can uh, know for sure that it's a Gorio. But it's a little hard to know what its favorite room is because it doesn't have like... Uh, it doesn't have ghost orbs, which is like one thing you can use to figure out the favorite room. It only has fingerprints and EMF level five. So yeah, it's extremely annoying, especially in no evidence, which is why I hate it so much because it just doesn't do anything special. It hunts at 50% sanity, speeds up like any normal ghost. That's it. It just has the dots thing and the not roaming thing. Uh, and on top of that, so every ghost, as I said, has uh, an ability to roam far away from the ghost room sometimes. For the Gorio, this does not happen. It doesn't change favorite room and it doesn't roam far away from the ghost room. That's the things. All right. Miling. A Miling. A Miling is a very vocal and an active ghost. They are rumored to be quiet when hunting their prey. Strength. A Miling is known to be quieter when hunting. Weakness. Milings more frequently make paranormal sounds. So the Miling is also very simple. I don't know what was happening at this time, but they added some very simple ghosts. Um, when you're using a paramic, 
uh, the my the myling will make more sounds on the paramic. Similar, so the banshee will do a special sound. The myling will just more often do sounds. However, this is completely useless, and it should never be used to figure out a myling. I've been baited so many times. Uh, this ghost is doing so many paranormal sounds, or it's doing so few paranormal sounds. It must not be a myling, or uh, the other way around. It's just it's it's completely useless. Like it, I I don't know the exact numbers related to this, but it just. It shouldn't be used to figure out the ghost. What should be used to figure out the ghost is a myling is known to be quieter when hunting. Uh, so when you're against a myling uh, and you're, f you will not be able to hear, uh, if you're on a small map, you will not be able to hear any of the footsteps until your flashlights and your equipment starts freaking out, which um, is usually very obvious. It can be kind of tricky uh, sometimes because on some small maps, the map is so small that you can't really be far enough away from it to, to, to not be able to hear the footsteps. Um, but yeah, if you are not hearing any footsteps and your flashlight is like... It, so it's, it's a little harder now than it used to be. It used to be the case that if you instantly heard the footsteps, as soon as the flashlight started blinking, you could rule out, you could say like, okay, this is a myling. However, now they have made it gradually fade in and gradually fade out. So it's not as abrupt anymore, which has made the myling slightly stronger. Now you have to just be like, okay, I can only start hearing the footsteps when my flashlights and equipment starts freaking out. It probably is a myling, but it's a little bit more tricky than before. So they can only be here, uh, heard, uh, yeah, so the electronics start to flicker at 10 meters per second, and the uh, the footsteps can be heard at 12 meters per second. So you can hear it slightly before your equipment starts freaking out, but um, it's like, especially if you hold them side by side, like if you hear a normal ghost compared to a myling, you would instantly know. But because sometimes you're playing a game and you don't have that comparison, it can be a little tricky to figure it out. But it still should be obvious if you can't hear it, especially on small maps uh, from a distance, you know it's a myling. Now, what's, there's a lot of caveats there. So if you're above the myling on a different floor, let's say the, you're on Edgefield and the ghost is walking downstairs and you're upstairs and you hear the footsteps extremely clearly, but your equipment is not going crazy. That's, that doesn't mean it's not a myling because your equipment won't glitch out when you're on a different floor. So you can't use that. It has to be on the same floor as you in order to figure out a myling. So keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, that's it. It's just a little tricky, but it will not, you will be able to hear the footsteps only slightly before the f equipment starts flickering instead of way before. Uh, on bigger maps, it can be harder because the equipment range, like the, the range at which equipment starts freaking out is bigger. So you can't use this same, you can't use the same trick. It's just gonna have to come from experience. Like I cannot hear this ghost. Like I can hear lots of throws and lots of doors, but I can't hear the ghost footsteps. It must be a myling. Now, this does not apply to the sounds of the ghost. It only applies to the footsteps of the ghost. So if you hear a very quiet ghost because it, it's not making much like screaming noise or singing noise, that doesn't mean it's a myling. That's just random. It's only the footsteps. So yeah, that's it. Um, the myling has EMF level five fingerprints and ghost writing. So it's pretty hard because it only has uh, fingerprints is the easy evidence, but EMF level five and ghost writing can be hard. Uh, and this can sometimes be tricky. So the myling can be kind of, it can mess with you. Even with a lot of hours in the game, the myling can sometimes uh, throw you for a loop. That's just, it's just the way it goes. You have to get familiar with the myling in order to, to be really good at figuring it out using its footstep sound. But anyway, that is the myling on Rio. Uh, on Rio, the on Rio is often referred as the wrathful spirit. It steals souls from its victims' bodies to seek revenge. This ghost has been known to fear any form of fire and will do anything to be far from it. Strength, extinguishing a flame can cause an Onryo to attack. Weakness, when threatened, the ghost will be less likely to hunt. So there's a, actually quite a lot quite a lot of moving parts here. So the Onryo, um, so let, let's, let's talk about the strength. Let's just start with the strengths and then we'll talk about the specifics. Uh, so when there's a candle near an Onryo, it works as a... Oh, God. When there's a candle near an Onryo, it works as a crucifix. So it'll stop the ghost from hunting. I think it is at... Oh, yeah. It cannot hunt within four meters of a fire. So slightly more than the crucifix. It's slightly bigger range than the crucifix. So if you place two candles in, a go in the ghost room and it just completely stops hunting at 100% sanity, you know, all right, I'm probably dealing with an Onryo. 
However, on the upside of that, if it blows out a candle, it has a chance to instantly start a hunt at any sanity. Um, which, this, there's a little caveat to this. The first three times, or when it blows out one candle, it won't hunt. If it blows out the second candle, it won't hunt. But when it blows out the third candle, it'll immediately, within like a little bit of time, start a hunt. And after that, every time it blows out an additional candle, it has a chance to start a hunt. So if you place three candles in the ghost room or you light a candle three times, and after the third blowout, it doesn't hunt, you can rule out on Rio, uh, which is a, a really easy way I usually rule out on Rio. Um, no, wait a minute. I, I'm kind of going all over the place. Really, let, let, me, let me rephrase that. So um, if the on Rio blows out a candle, it has a chance to hunt at any sanity which if you get a hunt at 100 percent sanity similar to the demon like it's the only other hunt that can hunt above 80 percent sanity it is uh it's actually a really strong ability because it counters one of the most up uh overpowered strategies in the game which is holding a candle my my life right now like i i am invincible because i have a candle the only way the ghost can ever hunt me is by doing ghost events and dropping my sanity that way because i will never lose sanity so this ghost is the only ghost that counters the most the strongest strategy in the game which i think is really cool oh it's just a hairball. It's, which this ghost is trying his hardest to drop my sanity um so yeah however the first three candles are special so uh the first two candles when it blows them out it cannot hunt after the third one it will always hunt and then from that point onwards it'll just hunt randomly like when it blows out a candle it has a chance to hunt so that's like it's it's a little tricky but that's the way it works two can first two candles no hunt at all uh third candle always a hunt fourth fifth sixth etc sometimes hunt that's how it works um now another way i figure out the the on rio or i rule out on rio you see me do this all the time is placing a candle and then placing a crucifix underneath the candle an on rio will always prefer to blow out a candle than to use a crucifix to stop its hunt. So when a, an Onrio tries to hunt and there's a candle, it'll instead blow out the candle and prevent it from hunting, but that can then trigger a hunt. So make sure to have multiple candles and light them immediately so you don't get it to stop a hunt by a candle and then it, it blowing out of the candle triggers another hunt, etc. So you, you gotta have multiple candles to really stop an Onrio from hunting. However, if you ever see a crucifix be used underneath a lit candle, Oh my god! Jesus fucking Christ, this is actually the most car I've ever had in my life. If you ever see a, a crucifix be used underneath a, a, a lit candle, you know instantly this is not an Onrio. I can rule out the Onrio. Um, and what does this mean? When threatened, this ghost will be less likely to hunt. This means uh, if you have candles nearby, it won't hunt because candles work as crucifixes, basically. Oh my god. Kind of wild ghost right now, holy shit. It, it, you can see, right? We're getting lower sanity, and the lower our sanity, the more the ghost is going crazy. Um, but yeah, that is everything. So once again, quick recap. Uh, first two candles, never hunt. Third candle, always hunt. Every candle after that, it blows out. It has a chance to hunt. Uh, if there's a candle nearby, it'll work as a crucifix, which you can use by placing it on top of a crucifix. If it uses a crucifix, can't be an Unreal. Now, there's a, a small other thing. There's one tiny hidden ability which refers to this. The Onryo is often referred to as the Wrathful Spirit. It steals souls from its victims' dying, bo dying bodies to seek revenge. If the Onryo kills someone in multiplayer, um, it'll increase the chance of it to hunt after blowing out a candle. If it kills two people, every time after that, when it blows out a candle, it'll trigger a hunt. So the chance of it hunting after blowing out a candle just goes up the more people are dead which is actually really cool i like that i like that ability is very very interesting it actually so this flavor text actually means something but yeah that's the on rio um and, oh no 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 no. there's another uh another thing i forget about if the if there's no candles the on rio can hunt at 60 percent sanity but if there is a candle it'll only be able to hunt at 50 percent sanity and again the, the candles will work as crucifixes so if you get an early hunt above 50, it could be an Onryo. Keep that in mind. Onryo has Spirit Box, Ghost Orbs, Freezing Temps, which is extremely easy evidence. However, what you need to keep in mind with this one is that this is also shared with the Mimic. Because uh, if you have a Mimic, it will be Freezing Temps, 
fingerprints spare box. So if you don't get fingerprints, but instead you see this the mimic's orbs, which is the mimic ability, you can be baited into thinking it's on Rio. So keep in mind that if you have on Rio evidence, you should also check for fingerprints to make sure you're not actually dealing with a mimic instead. So keep if you're playing on uh, on professional or nightmare mode, you you gotta make sure that you're not accidentally uh, like thinking it's an Unreal when it's actually a, a mimic. That's very important. So yeah, there you go. That's Unreal. Let's move on. The twins. The twins. These ghosts have been reported to mimic each other's actions. They alternate their attacks to confuse their prey. Strength. Either twin can be angered and initiate an attack on their prey. Uh, weakness. The twins will often interact with the environment at the same time. So the twins is actually a really cool ghost and it is also the only ghost that I had wrong in my previous ghost guide. The twins was incorrect. Now, I forgive myself for being incorrect because the devs were incorrect. Like, when I asked CJ how the twins worked, he explained it to me, but what he explained to me was not how the twins worked. So I was being coerced into sharing you misinformation by the devs themselves. So I feel like that wasn't really my fault. But anyway, uh, what I what I uh, explained about the twins, is, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna become the Joker with this ghost, uh, is that there's two ghosts, one real ghost and one decoy ghost. This is not true. There is only one ghost, but the ghost, it's like, it's two ghosts in one. So the first ghost has a normal range of interaction. It can just interact with stuff around it, uh, but then the ghost has a secondary range, which is like the decoy range, which basically fills like an absolute massive area. If it is like in this room, it could literally touch anything in the entire map. Like it is a huge range. So, um, but these will never separate. These will always be on top of the, the same ghost. Like the, um, it, it'll not like walk into separate directions. Like how I said it in the, in the first guide I did, it'll always be, uh, just one ghost with two separate ranges. However, what you can... Uh, I'm quickly going to take a pill, because exactly, I'm getting below 50% sanity. I just felt that way. Um, so that, that's just, that, that's to, important to keep in mind. So it is just one ghost. There's not actually two ghosts, even though they're called the twins. However, they have a lot of other abilities, which are really, really cool. So the twins. Either twin can be angered and initiate an attack on their prey. When, uh, well, then let me first explain the, the twin interaction because this is kind of linked to that. So you will sometimes hear me say, I think I heard a twin interaction or I think it did a twin interaction. What is a twin interaction? If a ghost, if the main ghost throws something, it does like an interaction, it touches the door or it throws an item. There's a chance that the decoy further away will like within 0 0.5 seconds do another throw so you will hear like boom boom like very close together um and if you hear that multiple times you can say like all right it's probably a twin because it's touching stuff in very close succession which is what i call what we've come to call a twin interaction now there's another way you can easily detect if there was a twin interaction which is by running to the truck and then checking the activity board if you see a line that goes up and changes slope halfway across somewhere. So it'll go up super steep and then it'll go up like at a different angle without plateauing. You know, okay, these activities happened so close together that there was never, like there was no time in between them. They just happened like basically at the same time, which is how you can tell uh, that it's a twin. So if you see that multiple times and you hear it sometimes, you can instantly figure out a twin. Now, another thing you can do with the twins is that if there's a huge range around the ghost room in which items get touched, like let's say this cup is thrown, then over there in the bathroom stuff gets thrown, like in a huge range around the garage, it keeps throwing stuff. We are probably, which in this case, we you're probably then dealing with the, with the twins. So in this case, we're probably not dealing with the twins because we've been here for like almost two hours. Also, mannequin outside by the way holy shit that actually just got the hell out of me <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> so um it'll probably not be a twin because it didn't do any like it didn't do stuff in a large range i'm thinking this might be a gorio because it's literally only been in the garage ever it's i mean it's it's left with ghost events but it's never really roamed too far away from the garage but anyway um so that is the twin interaction now uh, either twin can be angered and initiate an attack on their prey. Uh, there is about a 50% chance that the main ghost will hunt in the ghost room where it is at the time, or 
the other 50% of the time, the ghost will hunt from where it did the last last decoy interaction. So let's say the, the twin is in the, the main ghost is in the garage, and then the decoy throws this cup. Then there's a chance that if it wants to do a hunt, it'll actually start its hunt from the living room instead of from the ghost room, which can be really tricky because sometimes uh, like you'll be in the ghost room and then the hunt will start and you'll run away from the ghost room and then you'll be like, wait a minute, I'm running straight into the ghost and then you can get killed. So it's important to listen to where the hunt is starting from so you don't run into the ghost and get yourself killed. Um, another thing, which is the main re way we usually figure out the twins is that the decoy and the main ghost have different speeds. The main ghost will be 90% of a usual ghost speed, and the uh, decoy will be 110% of a usual ghost speed. So it's very minimal change compared to a normal ghost. However, what's really useful in this case is that it'll hunt as either of them during the whole game. So what you can do is you can wait for a hunt, listen to the footsteps, and then get a few more hunts. And if you ever hear slower or faster footsteps between different hunts you can go like all right i'm probably dealing with the twins here which is a really easy way the the decoy or the main ghost sounds significantly slower and the decoy sounds significantly faster especially if you compare them to each other so that's a really easy way to figure it out um uh it's a really cool ghost it hunts at 50 percent sanity so the decoy is not like an an early hunting ghost or something it's just a normal hunting ghost um but yeah, that is, uh, let me see if I'm missing anything. So it has two interaction ranges. One is about three meters and the other one is about 16 meters, which is absolutely massive. Like that is larger than your equipment glitching range. It's basically the whole map, uh, like if you're playing on a small map. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it. It's EMF level five spirit box. And I, I actually cannot believe this, by the way. I'm, I'm about to literally leave and go get another ghost because I'm losing my fucking mind. EMF level five spirit box and freezing temperatures, uh, which uh, this ghost does not have any forced evidence. For some people, for some reason, people think that the, the twins has forced EMF. I don't know why they think that, but that's not the case. It shows it, it doesn't have any forced evidence. Any of this can show up, but it's pretty easy evidence. Uh, spirit box and freezing temperatures will show up quickly. But keep in mind, once again, that uh, spirit box and freezing temps are also shared with the mimic. So don't get baited by the mimic. Um, but yeah, that's it. Very cool ghost. Uh, love the twins. Love how uh, they can feel like they're in multiple places at once. It's a, it's a very neat ghost. It's, it's, it's one of the coolest they've added in the game, in my opinion. Uh, all right. Moving on, which we're starting to near the end, by the way. We, we've gone a lot faster, I feel like, with these ghosts. Uh, Raichu. Uh, or, wait, what? Raichu. A Raichu is a demon that thrives on electrical current. While generally calm, they can become agitated when overwhelmed with power. Strength. A Raichu can siphon power from nearby electrical devices, making it move faster. Weakness. Raichus are constantly disrupting electronic equipment when attacking, making it easier to track. So, the strength of the, the Raichu is only related to electronical items. So stuff like a flashlight, a video cam, a EMF, etc., etc. Not the lights in the house. That's often a misconception. The lights will do nothing. So if the breaker is off or on, it doesn't do anything with the breaker. It doesn't give a shit about the breaker. It only cares about electronical items. If there are electronical items near the ghost, it has a 65% chance, or it starts hunting at 65% sanity, rather than 50% sanity. Um, but if there's no electronics, it starts at 50% sanity. So if you are thinking it's a Raichu, it's really important to turn off the electronical equipment. However, what I think is really clever about the Raichu design is look at their evidence. EMF level five, which means you constantly need to have an EMF nearby. Ghost orbs, which means you need to place a camera, which the camera will make it faster. Dots projector, which means you need to play a do place a dots projector which means it gets faster. So all the evidence the Raichu has will make it angry during a hunt. We'll make it hunt at 65 65% sanity and we'll make it super fast during a hunt because the Raichu, when it's close to electronical items, it'll become a lot faster. And as soon as it gets away from them, it'll be slower. So this is, together with Hantu, one of the only other ghosts that can speed up and slow down without chasing a player. So if you hear super fast in some areas and then it goes to another area and it gets slower, 
it's probably like you're dealing with a Hantu or a Raichu. That's 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 something you can figure out. Uh, Raichus are constantly disrupting electronic equipment when attacking, making it easier to track. This is actually something that can often bait me personally. Uh, it can make me think that a ghost is a Myling, whereas it actually is a Raichu, because. The right you will will destroy or will make your equipment go crazy at 15 meters rather than 10 meters of any other ghost. So we'll make it go. It has a range of 50% more than uh, the other ghost, which is massive. Like, that means that you cannot, pro like you can't properly hear the footsteps from that range. Like if you get the equipment to glitch out from like huge ranges. Uh, you can usually be like, wait a minute, this is either like a Myling and I can't hear the ghost, or this is a Raichu and it's just making my equipment go crazy from really far away. However, this can be kind of tricky. Like, I, I usually don't keep this in the forefront of my mind because it's not a super useful ability. Like, I rarely figure out the Raichu this way. It's only, it, it's, it's classified as a weakness, but honestly, it should be a strength because it's been, it's, it's baited me more than once. Like, this has led to me thinking it was a Myling uh way more than it actually has me has helped me to figure out a raichu so yeah uh raichu is really strong ghost early hunting ghosts are always strong the fact that you need to have your that it thrives off of equipment means that if you're running away from it and you don't turn off your flashlight it can be extremely fast um which yeah it's it's a really scary ghost it can hunt at what's the speed 2.5 meters per second when near electronical equipment which is really really fast uh, and all its evidence requires electronical equipment. Like if this had ghost writing, fingerprints, you could just take a glow stick, you could take a writing book and the glow stick doesn't make it go crazy. So yeah, uh, another thing that doesn't make it go crazy, if you throw a video cam, this, these are important because I actually didn't know this until recently. If you throw a video cam on the ground without placing it, the, the screen will go closed and it won't actually count as an electronical item. So that won't speed it up. Other thing, photo cam. If you drop a photo cam on the ground, it won't make the Raichu go faster. Only when you're holding it in your hand. So keep that in mind. Photo cam and video cam, if they're on the ground, not placed. Same with dots. If you throw a dots on the ground, it won't actually make it go faster. I think similarly, motion sensors won't make it go faster. I think that doesn't apply. It only applies to stuff that glitches out during a hunt. So yeah. Uh, that's a Raichu, really cool ghost, one of the strongest in the game. Uh, make sure that if you know it's a Raichu, to turn off all the electronical items so you don't get absolutely blasted by a Raichu. Alrighty, next one. Obake. Obake got some changes done to it recently, which has made it a really, really cool ghost, in my opinion. They have finally done it justice. Obake. Obake are terrifying shapeshifters capable of taking on many forms. They have been seen taking on humanoid shapes to attract their prey. Strength. When interacting with the environment, an obake will rarely leave a trace. Weakness. Sometimes this ghost will shapeshift, leaving behind unique evidence. So, um, uh, let's first talk about the strength. What does this mean? When, leave, when interacting with the environment, an obake will rarely leave a trace. Obake has fingerprints. When it touches a door, obake is the only ghost that will n sometimes not leave a fingerprint when it touches either a light switch, a uh, keyboard, uh, or a uh, door. If if you get a door to be touched and you don't see fingerprints, and then later on you do see fingerprints, you can instantly know it's an Obake. Now, what is really important with the current version of the game is that you keep in mind how bugged fingerprints are. If you have the oh, cool box as well, or or the breaker door, yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that can have fingerprints. Uh, fingerprints currently are. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's, not a mare, but it's doing a lot of stuff. I thought it was hunting, Jesus Christ. Um, so, what you have to keep in mind is that the fingerprints currently are extremely broken. If I, if there is a, if you have your flashlight shining on this and you also have a, a, a glow stick in your hand, let me quickly see if this is a fingerprints ghost because it's probably a Gorio, which means there is fingerprints. And I can show you, like I can, I can show you how fucked up this is. Um, because if there is any other light source shining on a fingerprint, it will be invisible even when you shine a UV light on it. Which means that sometimes you'll think that there were finger there were no fingerprints, even though there were, but you just didn't see them because it was so bugged. So you need to keep that in mind currently. I hope they're gonna fix this really soon because it's extremely it's extremely frustrating. Uh, let me see. Did you touch any door? So I can show this. You did not, or no, you did not. All right, well, I, so if there is, 
a dots projector right here and then i shine a uv light on it right now even if there were fingerprints right there they would be invisible because of the dots projector so you would need to pick up the dots turn it off and then look for fingerprints so keep that in mind that uh, any other light source will uh make fingerprints invisible which is really stupid but yeah that uh, that's a really uh, short little little hint but anyway um continuing uh fingerprints because this is related to fingerprints and it's special uh thing it also has a special fingerprint there's a small chance that every time it leaves the fingerprints it leaves a six fingered fingerprint which you can just count the fingers if you see that it has six fingers you know you're dealing with an obake which is something that instantly gives it away um that because it has both it can sometimes not leave fingerprints and it can leave a special fingerprint that means uh fingerprints is a forced evidence so similar to onto uh if you haunt to freezing you will always see fingerprints if you're playing with like one evidence or nightmare mode with two evidence now on top of that it also has another ability with fingerprints where so when a ghost touches something i think it's two minutes for two minutes the fingerprints will remain on that door however the obake has an ability that it will reduce all the timers of all the fingerprints in the map by 50 percent so let's say the ghost touches yeah i need to pick up my candle let's say the ghost touches a door there's a fingerprint and then it starts like running the timer of the of the um, the fingerprint duration the, the obake can just decide okay the current timer is at 50 i'm gonna cut that in half it's now gonna be 25 so it, the fingerprints will uh, disappear quicker when it is an obake sometimes not always but sometimes um but that's it with fingerprints. That's the old Obake. That's used to be the Obake, which meant that if you were playing on zero evidence, you would never get, any, you wouldn't be able to figure out an Obake because there was nothing you could do. However, then they finally implemented this. Obakes are terrifying shapeshifters. They finally implemented a shapeshifting ability, which how does this work? It's really cool. Um, if the ghost, if an Obake is hunting and it's blinking, like, like a normal ghost, so it's just, just chasing you, it's blinking. There's a small chance, I don't know if I have exact chance, let me see. Uh, there is, a, oh, there's a 6.66, 6.66, uh, 6.66% chance every time it blinks that it turns into a different ghost model. So uh, I forgot, this can, this is same gendered ghost model, right? It's always, um, it always turns like a lady ghost will always turn into another lady ghost model uh and male ghost models will always turn other male ghost models um that it, there's a few little tidbits of, with that so first of all you can't 100 percent know for certain that if you saw a ghost during a hunt be just normal that it's not an obake because again it's only 6.66 percent chance so it's pretty rare you have to loop it for quite a while to see it so keep that in mind um secondly if you're dealing with a female ghost, it can actually be really hard, and sometimes you can be baited into thinking that a ghost is a phantom, whereas you're actually dealing with a with a with an obake. Why is that? If you know female ghosts, there's two female ghost models that are crawling ghost models. There's a tiny ghost, and there is the Lisa model that crawls on the ground. So if let's say the 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 like the female ghost with like the slashes on their arm turns into the small ghost. You might not be able to see her behind the object you're looping the ghost so it'll just seem like she all of a sudden became invisible even though she wasn't and same with the crawling ghost she will you'll not be able to see her behind whatever you're looping so she'll just be invisible for a really long time so when you're dealing with a female ghost keep in mind that if you don't see the ghost for a really long time between blinks it might be either because it's a phantom or because it turned into a small ghost that you couldn't see behind the object so that's it's a little tricky keep that in mind these are the like niche things you have to you learn over 2000 hours of playing this game you won't immediately keep think that but like when you play it so much you you start dealing with this stuff on a regular basis um now uh, what, an interesting other thing is that it can also turn into itself so if you're dealing with a lisa ghost lisa can be bent over backwards she can be crawling and she can be standing up straight if she's standing up straight she can also all of a sudden turn into the same model but in a different shape so she can break her back so that's that's also counts as shape shifting keep that in mind but yeah that is the shape shifting ability which is really cool i really like it i wish they would have gone further with it because still they have been seen taking on humanoid shapes to attract their prey this part of the description is still complete bullshit it doesn't ever do this. I wish there was like a 1 in 10% chance or 1 in 10 
chance for a hunt to just during a hunt it just turns into one of the players dude imagine you're you're walking around you're sitting in a room scared of the ghost Someone comes in through the door and you're like, oh, it's just a player. And then all of a sudden you get grabbed and you die. It would be so cool. Like, I don't know why they haven't done that. Like, it's such an easy thing to do, I would imagine. And it, it would make it so scary. Like, it would make it really, really cool. So I wish they, I hope they eventually are going to do that. But yeah, still, this makes it possible to detect an Obake in a no evidence run. And it's just a really cool thing. It's an actual shapeshifter, which we haven't seen before. And the strength and weakness is just related to the fingerprints, remember? So yeah, that's the Obake. It hunts at 50% sanity and it speeds up like usual, which means you're gonna have, if you wanna test for a, if you wanna test for an Obake, you need to keep in mind that uh, you should have a smudge stick because when you're looping it, it's gonna get faster over time. So keep that in mind. It has EMF level five fingerprints and ghost orbs. Fingerprints are forced when you're playing with low evidence. Um, it's a pretty easy ghost, honestly, to figure out, uh, especially seeing the special fingerprint or seeing it sometimes not leave fingerprints can make it really obvious. But yeah, that's the Obake. We only have four ghosts left now and we're getting to the last ghost initial, like in my previous ghost guide, the Mimic was the last ghost that I talked about because Moroi, Dio, and Thay did not exist yet. So here we're coming into new stuff. The Mimic. Mimic is a lot of people's favorite ghost. Uh, me, I love this ghost. It is also the ghost I have died to the most, and I've also seen the Mimic the most. I don't know why. Uh, it seems like <laughs> I, I Mimic fools me a lot, and I, it's also my most common ghost. Il Mimo. Now, the reason... Let me give you some background lore for our stream. Why do we say Il Nemo sometimes? That's because when you turn your game to Italian, uh, which we did for our uh, challenge where we taught, where we changed the game into a different language, it'll say Il Mimo, which is beautiful. Il Mimo. Uh, but anyway, a Mimic is a crazy ghost. Probably the craziest ghost in the game. And one of the ghosts that most often you will get wrong because... Oh. Jesus Christ. Because its ability... Well, let's, let's just read the thing, right? Let's read the thing. The Mimic is an elusive, mysterious copycat ghost that mirrors traits and behaviors from others, including other ghost types. Strengths. We're unsure what this ghost is capable of. Be careful. Weakness. Several reports have noted ghost orb sightings near the Mimic. So the weakness is extremely important and makes this ghost really easy to tell most of the time because... Even when you're playing with zero evidence, the ghost orbs will still show up. So if you doing a zero evidence run, you grab a video cam and you see a ghost orb, you instantly know it's a mimic. That's an instant giveaway. Um, but it can be actually a strength sometimes. Like, let's remember when I said if you get freezing temperature, spirit box, and ghost orb, you can think it's an Unreal, but it could actually be a mimic because you didn't see the fingerprints yet, right? So keep that in mind. Whenever you see any combination with ghost orbs, you need to think this might be a mimic. So its evidence is really important because the uh, the mimic does not have ghost orbs. Like spirit box, fingerprints, freezing temps doesn't include ghost orbs. It'll show you four evidences instead of three. Uh, now the strength is as crazy as it sounds. This ghost can turn into every single other ghost. Every single other ghost. Um, which the uh, incoming question can it also do x x thing from x ghost? Yes, literally everything. There is nothing. The Mimic cannot do. The only thing, there's one single thing the Mimic cannot do, and that is Gorio Dots, because it doesn't have dots. That's the only thing it can do, but it can do Obake fingerprints. It can do Diogen slow speed. It could do Revenant speed. It could do a Polter throw. It could do Hantu speed. It could do literally anything. Anything any ghost can do, it can do that as well. There is only one ghost that is a little special for the Mimic, which is the Thay. Um, the Thay, we're going to talk about this later, has an ability where it'll slowly get slower and less active over time. When the Mimic turns into a Thay, it'll pick a random age. So instead of being always super fast when it turns into a Thay, it'll just pick a random age anywhere between the min and the max. So that's the only time uh, the, the Mimic can be a, like... The only thing that is a little weird about the Mimic. But besides that, the Mimic can turn into every single other ghost, including some weird things the mimic can turn into a mimic what does that mean it means nothing it means it's just a blank ghost it's not going to have any abilities it's just going to be like a completely normal ghost 50 percent sanity hunting uh normal speed speeding up during a hunt nothing else uh it can also turn into a player which what does that mean player uh that means it's just a 50 percent sanity hunting ghost with 
normal speed speeding up like it's just a blank like it's a blank slate ghost so that those are two things it can also do which this has been confirmed by the dev that internally it works this way it can just literally turn into every ghost but yeah if you are getting weird behavior you're getting like a ghost being fast and then slow and then it does a polter throw and it does a phantom blink and it does etc 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 keep in mind that every time you walk into a map and you get a pulse like a, a, a ghost event and you take a photo and it is a phantom it could also be a mimic like any every time it could when you instantly rule out a ghost like oh it's a wraith because it's not stepping in the salt or oh it's a phantom because it's it disappeared you could always you should always be like but mimic like mimic is gonna be that's why some people hate mimic as well because it always has to be in the back of your head like any ghost could be a mimic at any like well unless you get contradictory evidence right if you get emf5 or uh ghost riding or dots uh so if you uh, if you get dots emf or ghost riding it cannot be a mimic but any other four of the any other of the evidence doesn't rule out mimic remember because it has fingerprints spirit box and freezing temps and ghost orbs is the extra thing so keep that in mind um which i think it makes it like it makes it a really tricky ghost and i love it it's a really cool ghost uh it was honestly needed it was needed to have the mimic because it otherwise it's sometimes too easy like you instantly figure out a phantom and there is no uh you're just done now you have to think like maybe it's a mimic so yeah really cool ghost absolutely love it I, the mimic i don't have to explain much because it just turns into every other ghost which i've explained every other ghost so there's not much to say about the mimic but yeah there you go um moroi um, uh, the Moroi. Moroi have risen, which is one of the newest ghosts, by the way, one of the three newest ghosts. Moroi have risen from the grave to drain energy from the living. They have been known to place curses on their victims, curable only by antidotes or moving very far away. Strength. The weaker their victims, the stronger the Moroi becomes. Weakness. Moroi suffers from hyperosmia, weakening them for longer periods. Okay, so the Moro is a pretty tricky ghost and one of the strongest ghosts in the game because it, is an it has two extremely strong abilities. First, the um, the weaker the victims become, the stronger the Moro becomes. Uh, the Moro, when you are, the lower your sanity, the faster the Moro. Uh, if you're at exactly 50% sanity, so the Moro can hunt at normal sanity, it'll hunt at 50% sanity. If you're at 49% sanity, uh, you are, let me see. It, it'll be instead of 1.7 meters per second it'll be 1.583 meters per second which or no, no no wait a minute no it will be 1.5 meters per second if it's above 45 it'll be 1.5 meters per second which is significantly slower like you can hear that fairly obviously however because the moroi only starts hunting at 50 percent sanity it'll usually be lower than 50. Like, it'll usually be much lower, and it'll be much faster. The only time you can get that high r sanity range and still get a hunt is when you're using the Cursed Possession. If you use the Cursed Possession, and the ghost is really slow, be be you're, you're really high sanity because you, like, triggered it with a Voodoo Doll or something, you can then be like, all right, maybe it's a Moroi, which is, like, one of the things you need to keep in mind when you're using the Cursed Possession. However, as soon as you get below 35% sanity, the ghost becomes much faster than every other ghost until at 0% sanity, it moves at 2.25 meters per second, which is slightly slower than the Jin at max speed. However, what's really special about the Moroi is that when it moves at that 2.25 percent uh, or 2.25 meters per second speed, it can still speed up on top of that, which actually means that the Moroi is even faster than the Revenant when it's at max speed. Because let's say you're in a high school or something and it's chasing you down a hallway. If you're at 0% sanity, it'll be 2.25 plus an additional speed up of, I think the max speed is something like, or well, the max speed is 3.71 meters per second, which is uh, 0.71 meters per second faster than the Revenant, remember? Because the Revenant is three meters per second. So it can be, insanely fast like it can be incredibly fast so that is a really strong ability uh however then you think well it is a it's a really fast go so most of the time it'll be super fast during a hunt um but on top of but but it doesn't early hunt right you think it doesn't early hunt because it only hunts at 50 percent sanity however it has a special ability where if you either use the spirit box or you get a parabolic microphone footstep or scream on the parabolic microphone it'll put a curse on you. Now, what does this curse do? This curse will start draining your sanity no matter what. 
if you are, even if you're holding a candle, or if you're, even if you're in the light, it'll drop your sanity at a higher rate than the normal sanity drain. Uh, the only way to get rid of this curse is to either get out of the map, which will pause the curse. It won't remove the curse. If you're in the truck, it, you will still have the curse, but you won't lose any sanity while you're out of the map. However, if you get back in the map, it's gonna drain sanity again. The only way to get rid of it for real is taking a sanity pill, which, interestingly enough, if you have zero sanity, like if you use custom difficulty to set your sanity pills to 0% sanity restored, it'll still get rid of the Mora curse. It won't give you any sanity, but it'll still get rid of the Mora, Mora curse, which is the only way you can get rid of the Mora curse without dying. <laughs> I think, wait, actually, if you die and get revived, are you still cursed? I don't know. <laughs> if you get revived by a high priestess, I think you probably won't be, but I actually don't know. I've never had that happen. So yeah, let me know if you know that. Um, so yeah, it time to do science. <laughs> um, so that, that means, so what does that mean? That means that it counters candle strat, which as I, as I said with the with the on Rio, candle strat is one of the most OP things you can do in the game, as you can see right here. I haven't been hunted at all, and I've been playing this game for two hours. Um, so candles are countered because it'll still drain sanity, and it'll drain sanity faster. So it means that the Moroi can actually early hunt, even though it physically can't hunt above 50% sanity, because it curses the player. Uh, it drops its sanity so much faster that you will feel like you get early hunted. Especially if you're playing single player, where... Uh, oh, my, how the fuck did that hit me? Especially if you're playing single player, uh, where you are the sole sanity holder. Like, the only person... It only depends on your sanity. Uh, and you're gonna be using the spirit box. Because in a team, only the person using the spirit box will be cursed. So just make sure that if you are playing in a team, someone uses the spirit box and their sanity all of a sudden is much lower than the rest of the squad, it might mean that we're, you're dealing with a Moroi who cursed a player. Um, which is honestly something you can use pretty reliably to tell it apart uh, and to figure out if you're dealing with a Moroi or not. Now again, even in no sanity runs where you can't use the spirit box, you can still figure out Moroi by using the parabolic microphone because it also affects through parabolic microphone whispers and footsteps. Uh, now because the curse is triggered by the spirit box, this means that the spirit box is a forced evidence on if you're playing on nightmare mode. So spirit box is an evidence that's always going to show up. Um, if you don't get spirit box, if you get ghost rising and freezing, you know it's not a Moroi. Uh, and if you're playing like a really low evidence run with just if you're playing on the new insanity difficulty that's coming out soon um, And you don't get spirit box, you know, it's not a mora, which is actually really useful, especially for insanity mode It's gonna be really important. Yeah, uh, other thing weakness mora suffers from hyperosmia Weakening them for longer periods. Uh, hyperosmia means a sensitivity to smells. What does this refer to? This refers to when you smudge a ghost during a hunt as I said It'll give you a safety of six seconds. For six seconds, you won't be able to die uh, by the ghost touching you, and it won't target you. It'll just randomly walk around. Uh, however, for the Moroi, instead of six seconds, this is 12 seconds, which is really obvious. Like, you should probably not do this, use this ability too much. You should just listen to the footsteps. Um, but if you do, if you... Um, uh, do smudge it, and it don't doesn't target you for a really long time, like for 12 seconds. Uh, you know, oh hi, I'm dealing with a Mora here. But keep in, but keep in mind that it randomly roams, right? So it can seem like it's targeting you, even though it's still just like randomly walking around. So that's for the Moroi. Uh, now, what they've recently changed about the Moroi, which is something I've been using so much to figure it out. How do you figure out a Moroi? Uh, if uh, you are at 0% sanity. The Moroi can sound very similar to the Thay at max speed, uh, which can make it really hard to distinguish between a uh, a Thay and a Moroi. So how do you do that then? Uh, well, if you... So the Moroi will determine its speed based on your sanity, which means that if you uh, use sanity pills, like if you're at 0% sanity, it'll be super fast. If you hold two sanity pills during a hunt and you eat those sanity pills while the ghost is hunting, it'll increase your sanity, which means that it'll also decrease the Moroi's speed. So you can listen to the footsteps, they're super fast, and you take two pills and it's in all of a sudden it's super slow. Obviously you're dealing with a Moroi. This is like by far the easiest way to figure out if you're dealing with a Moroi and I've been using it a lot. It's extremely useful uh, so you don't even have to worry. Because the, the Thay is slightly faster 
at max speed than the moroi which is how you can otherwise figure them out but this is just a much better strategy just using the pills during a hunt uh, or the other way around using the ouija board to drop your sanity uh, during a hunt or the curse possession in general drop it during a hunt to um make it go faster so yeah this didn't used to work by the way uh but they recently changed that when i reported that this was a bug uh because <laughs> i i actually got it wrong i got a moro wrong because i uh dropped my sanity using the sa using the ouija board during a hunt and it didn't get faster oh god i did oh hi there what the you would think this is a mare it's been exploding so many lives um but anyway yeah, that is Moroi. Really cool ghost. Extremely strong. Like, deceptively strong. It both uh, drops your sanity really quick, which can make it feel like an early hunter, and it has probably one of the strongest ability in the in abilities in the game where it becomes faster, and on top of that, it can also become faster like by just chasing the player. It's incredibly strong. It's a really cool ghost. So yeah, uh, be on the lookout for a Moroi. And again, Spirit Box is four, so keep that in mind. Alrighty. Uh, two more ghosts. We're reaching the end. Dio. Diogen, which uh, actually pronounces De Ogen, which is a Bel Belgium ghost, uh, Belgian ghost, I think. Um, so, so let's just read it. Sometimes, which stands for the eyes, by the way. It's Dutch for the eyes. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's Dutch for eyes. Um, sometimes surrounded by an endless fog. Dio Diogen. I'm, I call them Diogen instead of the Ogen because... I just, that's just how I pronounced it. Uh, Diogen have been eluding ghost hunters for years. These ghosts have been reported to find even the most hidden prey before stalking them into exhaustion. This is the only, it is the only description in the entire book. No, no, no. Oh, uh, this one. No, but this is not a, what the fuck? That's the first thing in ghost event, by the way. Which, so for Banshee, remember, if you don't walk into this, it won't drop any sanity. So keep that in mind. So oh, right now I'm lo not losing any sanity. Uh, anyway, I'm talking about the ocean. Um, so it is only only description with a with a new line in there. I don't know why, but anyway. Um, Sometimes surrounded by an endless fog, Diogen have been eluding ghost hunters for years. These ghosts have been reported to find even the most hidden prey before stalking them into exhaustion. Strength. Diogen constantly sends the living. You can run, but you can't hide. Weakness. Diogen require a lot of energy to form and will move very slowly when approaching its victims. It's a really cool ghost. I love the Dio. Um, this ghost is going to be extra, which you probably have encountered one of these, but it's going to be extremely fast uh, when it's far away from the player. But it knows where you are always. So it'll go towards you at what speed? It'll go towards you at three meters per second. So revenant speed it'll go towards your location even if you're hiding even if you're not talking even if your equipment is off it'll find you even if it's on the complete other side of the asylum it doesn't matter it'll find you and it'll kill you if you don't run away from it however when it gets close to you it'll slow down to a crawl it'll become um one or the if it is 0 0.4 meters per second when it gets close to you. So it'll literally be like, it'll be so freaking slow. Like it's crazy slow. Even if you have the ghost speed up to 150% and your speed down to 50%, you can still outspeed a Diogen when it gets close to you, which is actually really important for 24 times difficulty challenge. Keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, you the way you survive a Diogen is just looping it around any object, or even if you don't have a looping spot, you can like, uh, like you can kind of do something like this where I get the ghost to walk over here and then I just run in a circle around it because it's so slow you can like pretty much walk in a circle around the ghost keeping it in the middle because it won't be it won't be fast enough to like <laughs> like you don't even have to loop it around an object you can literally loop around the ghost itself um, anyway <clears throat> so that is how you survive a Diogen uh, but what can be really tricky is that if you use the cursed possession, um, at the start of, like, if you get a hunt immediately, you do, when you hear these fast footsteps, you don't know what you're dealing with. Are you dealing with a Thay, with a Moroi, or with a Diogen? And depending on, like, if it's a Thay that's really fast, you have to hide. But if it's a Diogen that's really fast, you need to not hide. You need to get out of your hiding spot as fast as possible, which this has killed me so many times that I uh, <laughs> got... Thought it was a Thay, went, or thought it was a Dio, went out of my hiding spot, and then it was a Thay, and then I got killed. 
Um, so yeah, you you probably want to figure out if it's a DO first before you start like randomly using the cursed possession if you want to be safe. I sometimes just go for it and then I die. I don't really care. Um, so there's, there's some other stuff as well with the DO. Uh, the DO can only hunt at 40% sanity, which is actually really important. If you get a hunt either early or uh, like right around 50% sanity and it's a fast ghost, you should think, oh, wait a minute, this must be a Thay. It cannot be a Dio because it's hunting early. So keep that in mind that you don't uh, get baited into thinking it's a Dio when it's actually a Thay because the Thay can hunt super early, whereas the Dio can only hunt at 40% sanity. So that's really important. The only times you can't know that is when you use the Cursed Possession and you trigger the hunt yourself. You can't use this information. So yeah, 40% sanity is when it starts hunting. And then it has a really special ability. Um, where it has a special spirit box response. If you're standing on top of the Dio in a one meter range, which you have to basically be right on top of it, it has a sparrow, special spirit box response, which sounds kind of like... It sounds like that. Um, it's just like loud breathing instead of like the normal old or like, where are you? Or uh, what, what does it say? Like uh, kill, hurt, stuff like that. Um, the D.O. will, like, do that breathing event, which is... Oh. Uh, however, it is probably not the th a thing I usually use. I usually just, uh, wait for the ghost to hunt and then use, uh, the, the D.O. hunting ability as a way to figure it out. Uh, but you can use that. However, what is very useful, which I don't even know why they did this, why the devs did this, because the Dio has this hidden ability for the spirit box, they have also made it that the Dio will always have spirit box when you're like in doing a low effort of hunt. So similar to the Moroi, you if you get ghost riding and dots, you know it's not a Dio because uh, there's no spirit box. So that's really useful. Uh, however, I there's some things you can do to get this ability. This is genuinely the most annoying ghost I've ever had to deal with. It's been doing the car all the time. It's been turning off the breaker all the time. You suck. Uh, but anyway, um, the the way you can get that ability, it, again, it's not the most useful way, but if you want to hear it, uh, you can place motion sensors. Like, you can place one motion sensor here, one motion sensor there, and then if you see a trigger a motion sensor, you can then stand right here and spam the spirit box or an even better strategy in my opinion is using salt if you place salt and then you follow the footsteps and you see where they stop then you go stand on the final footstep and you start spamming spirit box and then you can sometimes get it or an even better way is if it does a ghost event like a standing still ghost event right there you can run on top of the ghost event and then start doing the spirit box which can then also trigger the event and it's only a 30 percent chance as far as i know um, it's like only 30% chance when you get the spirit box that it does this, uh, and you're on top of it that it does the special spirit box response. So it's, it's, it's pretty rare and you need to be so close to the ghost that it rarely happens. But yeah, anyway, that is, um, uh, that is the Dio. Really cool ghost. Again, I think Dio is so cool. Similar to the Mimic, the Dio has completely changed the way you have to play the game. It is similar to the Mimic, a ghost you always have to keep in mind because you need to think, can I hide or am I dealing with a Dio? Because if you're hiding against a Dio, you will die. Like, I know people that have uh, a friend of mine uh, who has over 10,000 levels in the game uh, and like 2,000 hours plus. There, the ghost they die to the most is Dio because they will always try and hide and then they will like forget and then they <laughs> will get caught by a Dio who just knows where they are at all times. So yeah, keep that in mind. It's one of those things you just always got to think about that the Dio can be, uh, they've changed the game. Yeah, they've completely changed the game. Now for the final ghost. And so my favorite ghosts are Revenant, Oni, and Thay. So where we have saved the best for last, Thay. They have been known to rapidly age over time, even in the afterlife. From what we've learned, they seem to deteriorate faster while within the presence of the living. Strength. Upon entering the location, the Thay will become active, defensive, and agile. Weakness. They will weaken over time, making them weaker, slower, and less aggressive. Thay is a very cool, very cool ghost. It uh, has some of the most... Honestly, it is the most unique ghost in the game, which with like a very specific personality. The Thay um, will start at a young age. It'll be young, which you can even detect this on the spirit box. It'll give you a low age. 
And then if you are close to the ghost, like on top of the ghost, it'll slowly get older and older over time, which will weaken its abilities. All its abilities are linked to the age of the ghost. If it is at the youngest it is, you just entered the map, you haven't been close to the ghost at all, it'll be hunting at 75% sanity. So even higher than a demon, extremely high. And it'll be moving at 2.7 meters per second. It'll be super fast and it'll hunt super early. However, if it is at the the oldest age it can be, so if you've been next to the ghost for a super long time, it'll only hunt at 15% sanity. So much lower than the shade. Uh, and it'll be moving at uh, one meter per second. So it's a really interesting ghost. Whereas at the start, it'll be like a crazy uh, revenant speed, uh, early hunting demon. At the end, it'll be a super shy shade that moves at like a snail's pace that cannot kill you. So it's just like, it's a really interesting design. Now, how does this age system work? Um, every one to two minutes so it, so it when you enter the map when you open the door the they will set a timer between one and two minutes um it'll count down this timer and then when the timer reaches zero it'll check is there a player close to me if there is it gets one stage older and there's 10 stages there's 10 10 tiers between the mac the the, the strongest and the weakest so um, it'll it'll check is there a player nearby yes i get older no i set a 30 second timer until i check again if in 30 seconds there's no not a player still set another 30 make it 30 second timer etc etc until there's a player nearby it'll get one stage older and then it'll set and then after it gets older it'll set a one to two minute timer again check if there's a player nearby if not 30 seconds if there is another one to two minutes timer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, until it is as old, uh, as super old and it and it won't check anymore because it's old as it can be. So you can check this um, with the Ouija board as well, which is really cool. You can check the age actually physically getting older, which is a really nice detail. Or you can get either an early hunt. The safest thing you could do is be close to the ghost a lot. However, because the ghost can early hunt so, so like at 75% sanity and it's so fast. It's really dangerous to be close to a Fae because at, at the start, it'll also do a lot more ghost events. So it'll be super active, super early hunting and super fast. It's like a crazy Oni demon revenant. Like it's literally all the strongest ghosts in one at the youngest age and all of the weakest ghosts at the oldest age. Or oldest age. It's really cool how they do that. Um, so it has a higher chance to do... Oh, oh yeah, wait a minute. I forgot to mention that with um, uh, with the Dio. Both Dio and Thay have Ghost Riding and, Spear, or Ghost Riding and Dots uh, Projector, which is really hard evidence to get. But both of those ghosts, because they're so strong, have had an increased chance to give you Ghost Riding and Dots Projector. So you're going to get this a little easier uh, to, to make up for these ghosts being so important and so strong. Uh, but yeah. So again, uh, what there's one strategy you can do. You can either just be close to the ghost with a candle. So, but but it will also do lots of ghost events and lower your sanity that way. So that's not necessarily safe. Um, but that's one strategy you can get it to grow older, or you can go to the ghost for 30 seconds, then leave for two minutes. So because of the way that the timer system works, you don't have to be there for most of the time. You can just leave the map for five minutes and go to the ghost room, wait a minute, and then it gets older. Then you leave again for five minutes, you come back and you just alternate by being out of the map for, for like three minutes and then going to the ghost room for 30 seconds, leaving, entering again. So you only have to be close to the ghost for a very short amount of time overall because of the way the system works, right? Remember, it'll set a timer between one to two minutes. And if it, there's no player, it'll only set a 30 second timer instead of another one to two minute timer. So you can just be gone for two minutes, then be there for 30 seconds, then be gone for two minutes, then be there for 30 seconds, etc., etc. And you only have to be there for a really short amount of time. Um, this ghost is becoming a lot of shadows, by the way. That's kind of interesting. And it's some airball ghost events too. Uh, oh, oh, oh god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> That's not ideal. Whew. 
First hunt! <laughs> First hunt after two and a half hours! Holy shit! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Actual Gorya or something? I don't know, let, let's leave this map and see what my sanity is at. Uh, so yeah, the Thay is incredibly cool. Uh, oh god. Oh my god, I should really hold. That's why you gotta hold the door at all times. Don't, I was gonna, I was all tabbing to check my notes. <laughs> That's why you gotta hold the door at all times. So it's either a shade or like a Gorio. So let's quickly see what my sanity is at. Because after the first hunt, right? During a hunt, you often see me, which if you wanna see me use this knowledge in vivo, like you wanna see me use all these in all this information in practice, I highly recommend checking out my no evidence playlist because there, I have to use all of this knowledge all the time, um, and I, I, um, I like, I like talk about everything as well. So there, you get a lot of information to more in practice, where you can see me use it. Now, it hunted early, or it hunted normal time, uh, so it's uh, not a demon, most likely. It's definitely not a shade because it's hunting uh, too early for a shade. It is definitely not a. Uh, Dio because it didn't find me. It's definitely not a Hantu because it wasn't slow. Uh, we should quickly just like get some evidence in there because we haven't done anything. Am I done though? Let me get, like, get wait, real quick. I need to make sure that I've t said everything I wanted to say. Um, it will weaken over time, making them less aggressive. So yeah, it's a really cool ghost. As long as you're close to it, it'll rapidly get older. However, what I think is really cool about the Thay is that it tries to fight you because it gets weaker when you're close to it. Uh, it starts off really strong and tries to like push you out of the ghost room by hunting early, being fast, doing ghost events. But if you can persevere through all that bullshit, you will make it weak and eventually you win over the ghost. So it's really like a battle. It's such a unique mechanic that we have that we don't have in any of the other ghosts. So yeah, extremely unique. Once again, remember the mimic. If the mimic turns into the Thay, it'll pick a random age instead of being the oldest or the youngest. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's for the for the thing. It doesn't have any forced evidence, but it will give you ghost riding and dodge projector more often. Now let's quickly finish this game. We we definitely give this ghost some uh, uh, need to need to respect it a little bit. We're just gonna grab some spare box. I what are we thinking right now? We've been here for a really long time. I'm honestly thinking it's probably, but it, we didn't see fingerprints. I was thinking it's a Gorio because it wasn't roaming at all. Uh, it did a lot of like exploding lights events uh but this ghost wasn't obvious at all like it didn't do anything specifically obvious all right instant orbs imagine it was a mimic this whole time instant orbs uh oh i guess i'm using text to speech <laughs> uh spirit box so it's a it could be a mare <laughs> oh it could be a mare which this is an interesting combo so wait what are we looking for it's not freezing right it's it hasn't been freezing I think it might be a mare. It, it turned off a light then. Uh, so it could still be a mimic too. Let's quickly see. Oh, wait, the breaker is still on because it was just, uh, it broke all these lights. Let's check for fingies. We don't have fingerprints, so I'm sorry. It's not a mimic. Uh, yokai. So once again, this is like a no, uh, if this was, uh, like if I had to, if I was playing nightmare mode, which I'm not, I'm playing professional. In this stage, I would like, you have to rule out these ghosts. Like if you, you play a lot of nightmare mode, you'll eventually need to use all this knowledge to figure out every single ghost. So what would you do in this specific situation? Uh, yokai, as I explained, you can use the, um, you can use the, the, the fact that it doesn't detect your equipment and your voice at a far away range to figure it out. Or for on Rio, you can place candles uh, and crucifixes uh, to figure it out that way. Uh, so let me quickly just place a candle on the crucifix. Oh, well, instant dots. Okay, so it's a yokai. Interesting, because I was talking to you guys instead of the ghost this whole time. It <laughs> it ended up like it di didn't hunt early at all because uh, it never heard me. But anyway, I wonder if that act... Wait a minute. Is text-to-speech OP? Text-to-speech might be OP against yokai because they don't even detect this. That's a new thing. I just learned something new. Oh god, oh god. So oh, let's let's show you this, by the way. This is how I'm standing here with my flashlight on. Yokai doesn't give a shit. Doesn't know. It's not coming for me. Okay, now we're just close enough. Fuck me. Let me loop it over here. 
So I break line of sight. I'm still having my equipment on. You would be found instantly by any ghost. Not by a yokai. Yokai has no idea. This is how you can tell that it's stupid. This is why we call it stupid, because it just doesn't find you, right? That's that's the yokai. Uh, but anyway, that was uh, a lot of talking. I can I can feel my voice is completely broken. And I think I did it. I mean, I did it in a little longer than the first first ghost guide. But again, I wanted to talk, talk to you about everything. How can you use this information and all the little bit of details? You have literally just in this two and a half hours, you have received all of the knowledge that I have gathered in following every single patch, following, uh, and like playing for 2000 hours, and you have just gotten all of that in one little package. Now, how long was that hunt or was that game actually? It was two hours and 38 minutes. The ghost is trying. Let's look at some of these crazy. This ghost was not very act. What the hell? This is, this is a perfect example of why sometimes you cannot figure out Gorio. It didn't change its favorite room a single time in two and a half hours. It never hunted, obviously. It did 21 ghost events, but it never changed its favorite room. So that's what I'm talking about. Like, you can't always figure out a Gorio based off of that because it just it was just in the favorite room all the time. Two hours and 18 minutes, it was in the favorite room just chilling in the, in the garage. But yeah, that was the ghost guide. Thank you so much for watching let me know what if you enjoyed this video uh, i'm probably not going to be doing another one of these for a long time uh because the ghosts are going to be staying this way for a, a while i hope if there are any updates like if something significantly changes i will link a pinned comment down below that'll say which ghosts are outdated i probably won't like write out everything that has changed about them but i'll just quickly note down like this ghost is outdated this ghost is outdated. So any ghost that's not on that list, you can just take this information and run with it. Uh, but yeah, that was everything I've learned. I hope you learned something. If you didn't learn anything, you probably are me watching this video while editing it because there was so much information here. Even I learned something new today with the text-to-speech against the yokai. But anyway, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not subscribed, please do so. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. And if you want to join the lovely gamers here in chat, you can join us over at twitch.tv slash insim. Click the link in the description down below. And if you want to watch more of me, once again, I highly recommend checking out the No Evidence playlist where all this knowledge get put into practice. I'm going to be doing a lot more No Evidence. I'll link that playlist over in the top right. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one. <laughs>